Q. Maybe you did that. What up, what up, what up, man? It's your boy Shy. Shy vs. Everybody podcast. Voice of Detroit. Motherfucking podcast MVP in this motherfucker, man. Boy, Shaw, Shaw vs. A Bike Podcast, episode 168, man. We got, man, finally, I'm glad, though. We got a little consistency of no rappers. I'm tired of rappers, though. Like, <laughs> how you want to talk to different niggas and rappers, though? But we got, uh, man, you got a lot of hats, man. You got uh, your artist, brand owner, a profit. Uh, you event planner, you could say that. Yeah. Fashion designer. Yeah. Uh, father. Yeah. What else? What am I missing, though? What else? Some other yeah. shit. Um, man. Um, I can say I'm a, I'm a, I'm a all around family, man. I got a, I got a whole family. You see, I'm here with my, my girl and For sure. I got kids. So I'm just not just the father. I ain't out here. Just I'm a father. Like I'm all around everything. I'm a brother. Like I help out my entire family. I'm a, um, a youth leader. Like, uh, I haven't really been doing mentoring lately, yeah. but my last three mentors, they kind of, they growing out. So they doing their thing and, you know, let, I let them into the light. For sure. Um, Hell yeah, all that yeah, shit. Yeah, everything. Well, shit, know? man, we got 168, man. We got the homie Fresh in the building. What's, What's good with you, dog? On? What's going on? I'm glad you had, you know what I'm saying? I was going to call you by the government at first because, you know, my wife know you and shit. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, we, we, we like family. Like, I'm really like y'all cousin for real. <laughs> I, was about to, I was about to bring the kids for real because I thought she was going to be here because I know she wanted to see the kids. No, I can't have my kids come in this mud, dog. We don't <laughs> we have no podcast, dog. Yeah, yeah my kids too. <laughs> Especially my yeah. two-year-old daughter, dog. It's going to be a wrap, dog. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a wrap. But, man, we start everything off with a salute me while I'm here. A lot of times we wait for people to pass away to give them their flowers, make that long ass Facebook post about how we love him and her or her instead of giving them the flowers while you can still receive it. So you got somebody you want to go ahead and, you know, show some love to, but it can't be an easy answer. It can't be your kids. It can't be a lady. It can't be your parents. It got to be somebody outside of that easy answer. So who you want to go ahead and shoot can some flowers to? Can it be friends? To? For sure. Um, my homie, my homie D, he been rocking with me since uh, we was in middle school for real. We've been through fire. I remember one time, uh, I was a freshman mm -hmm. and a, a, a junior was trying to fight me. So, a lot of people was just trying to figure out, like, why are you so older trying to fight this young, you know, freshman that don't bother nobody? Yeah. But he was like, shit, we about to run up in the school because he went to a different school. He's like, oh, <laughs> I'm gonna run up in your school with you. You feel me? <laughs> and uh, luckily, we, he, we, uh, it never happened because somebody saw me on my way to school with him and they gave me a ride and he went to his school. Yeah. But you know, like any situation for real, he got my back for real. Yeah, for sure. Uh and um it's probably a lot of more people for sure. But yeah. um what was dog name again? His name D. Oh you know, D, okay. D. Shout out to D who gonna run yep. to the schools and shit, dog. Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's what you got, nigga. Now you do that shit, nigga. You <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, you can't do that shit now, but yeah, it been, it been so many other things like uh like we was about to do some crazy. We was about to uh, rob this theater. So in our old neighborhood, <laughs> we got this uh, this theater called Riffer Theater, where like all like the white people go to for like, sure. For sure. I know watch exactly movies and stuff. Yeah. So, but that's our neighborhood, so we know the ins and out, the cuts through the alleys between the houses and everything. So we was about to uh, <laughs> use his grandma gun under under her bed God, you know he's like my grandma keep a gun under her bed you feel me we like 15 at the time so uh so i'm like look i got this book full of drones i used to draw all my brother double xl uh magazines jay-z's and mini sequel and stuff i'm like if i don't sell nothing out of this book we hitting that lick you feel me? it's easy too we just walk in the neighborhood and be like why are y'all walking this far to the theater yeah. like y'all are walking lit you feel me like 50 dollars would have been good but Duh. Uh, it never happened because I end up, you know, that opportunity led me to running into some right people. Yeah, you feel me? And oh, thank God, you feel me? I would have, I would have led my men's down the wrong trail. We both would have been in, yeah. you know, in some deep waters after that. You feel and then y'all got away with it. That would be some of y'all been thinking like, shit, we could do it again. You know, how yeah, that for shit sure, is. for sure. We, we, and we was that too. We was treacherous in the hood though back in the day. Yeah, real. but you know, and it's like. At that line where we could have went this way or we could have went that way. So for sure, for sure. But just having my back for sure. You feel me? So now like I realize that I really be influencing some bullshit. Like yeah. I know this is bullshit to myself. So I be giving him the best advice now. I'll be like, bro, go to work, bro. Don't do this, bro. Don't do that. You mm -hmm. feel me? Like, like, you know, no, you have some them. kids, settle down, do this, do that. You feel me? Cause 
I was the one on bullshit back in the day. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you be needing them niggas, dog, who gonna sit here because you got some niggas who encourage bullshit. Don't give a fuck about your well beings and all that shit, dog. So you need somebody gonna be like, hey man, stop, dog. You on some bullshit right now. Yeah, it was me. I was like, you should ride there. Yeah. That's what I said. <laughs> I, he ain't say it. He just like, man, that's a good idea. <laughs> No, niggas would be robbed them niggas and got caught up in it with the well, fucking idea. Oh, grandma probably had that old that old gun and shit. Dog. Oh yeah, I never even oh, asked what kind of gun you. That mo, it, it probably you probably got a. <laughs> Hell yeah, <laughs> no, niggas about to go crazy, dog. But shit, man, you we mentioned um you being a father, you know, saying as one of the hats that you wear, and um you know, saying of course I do my little research and I, I seen a post that you had made that was interesting. You had said uh, last year you had said the most proud you most proud of the relationship that you built with your younger daughter because. The year prior, you was absent. Can you can you speak on that? And like a lot of niggas, like I think it's important for people to hear because you got some niggas that just absent, don't realize it, just stay absent, don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So really, what had what happened was I was uh I had to open my store, so I had to open my I opened my store at the end of twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, basically, how everything kind of fell into place is, um. The same time that I knew I was going to open the store was yeah. the same time that I found out that my lady was having, a, you know, that we was going to have a second child. Mm-hmm. So that process was kind of like very, I don't know, it was kind of like not the easiest for real mm-hmm. um, because my mind was set on opening the store, yeah. but we got a child coming. So I'm just kind of like, you know, I really ain't prepared. I really didn't prepare. For sure. So I used them months to... um you know, because you know, you can't just oh, you can't just sign a lease and open the store yeah. the next day. Like I just, you know, I had to order stock and get this and get that and you know, get everything in place. Mm-hmm. So literally, I think she was supposed to have the child two weeks after we opened, which my team was set up and prepared for me to leave and go back. Yeah. But she had uh she went in labor the next day after our grand opening. Okay. And I had to go back and um, we had the child and um unfortunately uh, which i feel a lot better about now like four days after the baby was born i had to come back to detroit because we just opened yeah. and a lot of people was coming to the store while i was gone in the hospital you know they was coming in the store looking for me like some people like to just shop yeah. directly with me and at the time like some sales ranged from like a thousand dollars you know some sales would be like two three hundred dollars and for you know that's how i was eating at the time because i wasn't you know doing nothing doing nothing else so um and we still had pretty much everything set up in chicago and things like that so that first year i really would just kind of try to come every two weeks or you know come once a month um and um you know it was a really tough time because I was probably like the, the the toughest time um with my children and with my lady that I probably had ever. Yeah. Um but it was the most successful year with my business. We end up hitting over a thousand a hundred thousand dollars in sales oh, my shit. first year. Damn. So um yeah, so it was um it was a sacrifice yeah, to be honest. Sure. It was a real sacrifice and um so i ended up coming back because sales kind of like you know after everybody lost uh they unemployment like yeah, sales, yeah, yeah. sales started to like dip uh, a little bit I, you know, I went down like probably like 50 yeah. percent. so uh you know i had more time to come back and you know we kind of built a bond when i came back mm. that we didn't have and like we lit today like yeah, we really sure. be having the most time like the funnest time ever yeah. like this morning we had the funnest time yeah. you know so now yeah. how old your kids um arzuri is five yeah. and artist is two yeah okay okay yeah. but no that's how i be bro like i, I realize like when when niggas that are successful it's something that's gonna sacrifice they got sacrificed like that's yeah. time with your family time with your parents time with your kids time with your homies you got like something gonna is gonna hurt from you know what I'm saying? You trying to thrive with what you got going on. Right. You know what I'm saying? But for you to recognize that and and, and, and be able to, you know what I'm saying, express that, some niggas don't even do that. Don't even take accountability. Right. Like, you know, I know I was fucked up as, you know what I'm saying, as a, as a father, but I was doing it for this, but now I'm back and we can make things happen. Right, yep. So, um, yeah, like, we, we, 
extremely lit now, you know. So yeah. and I, I really we just had the most time. I'm like the the super dad, like where I be wanting to show people my kids all the time. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I be like posting stuff about them all the time. You know, sometimes I'll be like, you know, maybe I need to dial back a little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah. You no, know, it's just, sure. it's just like you be just so happy. Like I was just it was something she said today. Um she pointed at a calendar you know, and said, Dad, those are the days of the week. You yeah. know, and I wanted to post that, like, look, she know yeah, the yeah. days of the week. You no, know what I mean? Sure. Like, for sure. But it's like, you know. Yeah, because like, I got two boys, and then my youngest is a girl. So yeah. when my boys, of course, you happy to be a dad, but when the little girl, they get you on your emotional side, though. Oh, like, for sure. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, anything they do, like you said, they say something, you want to cry about everything. Like, what the for fuck? Sure, for sure. <laughs> I be want to post and, like, just celebrate everything. Yeah, you for know. sure. They gonna yeah. remember that shit though. Like, you know what I'm saying? And they be getting off for real because I I don't like we kind of me and my lady, we kind of talked and we just said, like, all right, you need to be the disciplinarian because yeah. it look crazy for you know, a big old man to be disciplining these little girls, you yeah, know. For sure. <laughs> and I'll be, you know, like you be the bad cop, I'll be the good cop, you yeah. know. So like when they be around me, I think they kind of catch on. So they be like yeah, we you can know, fool around with yeah, that and have a good time. They just come and just slap me and punch me <laughs> and color and eat whatever they want. They'd be like, I want this and now you I want it now. And I'd be like, All right. Oh, you get it. Yeah, hell yeah, dog. Yeah. Yes, I am, but I'm always the cool parent. Like, like because my oldest son's with a different person than my my youngest two's with my wife now. Yeah. But I'm like, y'all look, y'all got me because y'all y'all moms is me. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the cool one. I'm the one who's yeah, gonna let yeah. you get away. You eat ice cream at 10 o'clock in the morning, John. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, when you're yeah. around me, and John, you can play yeah. a game whenever. As long as you take care of your business and school. As long as you handle your business. Yeah, you, you ain't one. Hell and yeah. you're going to get some extras if you handle your business. For sure, for sure. Now, dog, you almost had the perfect birthday, bro. You was one day away from the best birthday in the world, dog. Your birthday, June 20th, right? Yeah. Yeah, you was one day from June 21st, bro. You could have been a real dude like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I saw it, she's like, oh, shit, you missed the cut. By a couple hours, dog. Come on, June 21st, man. I don't know if I'm a Gemini. Or cancer because some signs, some shit say I'm a. It cancer. say to twenty one. Some some say to twenty. Some say to twenty one. Yeah. So as what you lean on, what you feel like you is. Like, I don't know, dog. Like like what you claim, you know what you. Claim. I say I say Gemini, but I can say cancer too because sometimes I'll be in my bed, in my little, you know, what I'm saying sensitive bed. Like. That's cool. <laughs> That's cool, but I think Gemini. Since you got to think about like Kanye, Kanye, he kind of sensitive for sure. Hell yeah, uh, extremely sensitive. Uh. Tupac. Oh hell yeah! You feel me? Like yeah. it depends on how you cling, but like For I sure. get along with cancers too. Like, uh, you know, so yeah, I'm looking yeah. like oh dog, you almost you almost had that special day, bro. You yeah, know what I'm I mean, I respect <laughs> it. It's summertime, you know. Hell yeah, yeah. birthday yeah. of summer, my birthday, everything, yeah. dog. But shit, man, how how your year been this uh so far, man? Like we more than halfway through. Like how how your year been? And what were some goals that you set for yourself going into the new year? Um, it's this about to be. I don't know why, man. I've been on my really like changing my way of thinking and trying to become a new person, you yeah. know, like on some positivity type shit. Yeah. But one of my things was not, you know, how you get into the Facebook stuff and they'd be like, Oh, I mean, can I cut? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they'd be like, Hoes ain't shit, or you know, <laughs> girls be one a dude to pay for this and they don't even got a job yeah. so my thing was not to say no negativity to know about no no women at yeah, all for sure so that been going good um one of my uh last year was not getting to know internet debates and beefs <laughs> and stuff like that so <laughs> you know it's always them people who be on the internet just debating and beef with everybody <laughs> you know posting shit no. and then it'd be people who just be talking bad about guys and People talk bad about women, yeah. you know. These niggas broke, they can't even buy a sure. you know? yeah. And you be like, like, yeah. no. like this is tasteful. So, I, I had to self reflect and understand that I'm an entrepreneur and you know, I'm a community leader yeah. and people looking at me. For so, sure. what is the content that I'm talking about? Am I talking about like how am I talking about? Hoes ain't shit, and I'm showing that I've been with the same person for 12 years. Yeah. You like that don't even look right. And I may be, I may be looking at reality show, but if somebody from the outside looking in, he'll be like, "What is he really saying?" Yeah, for sure. And we... that's not what I'm. I don't want nobody to get confused. You feel no, me? People facts. can get confused. Like I can be looking at a reality show and look at uh, Jocelyn, and I'll be like, 
why do you so, so wretched like that? I'm not, you know, yeah. and that's not what it reflects. Like, and so I've been showing more of what I reflect. Like, so, we posted that we celebrated our 12th year anniversary. Oh, that's shit, what congrats, people, congrats yeah, that's what people should see. I'm posting that I'm a father. I'm posting that I'm an entrepreneur. I don't need to, you know, even engage in these subjects. Yeah. You know, like so why facts. am I engaging in hoes and shit subjects? Yeah. And, and I got somebody that's special. Yeah, that's that, yeah, 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 like, yeah, for sure. Fact. That don't make sense. That's not matching up, you know. Like you a walking talking brand, and people buy you first. Yeah. So I'm trying to engage in these act these conversations and these activities mm-hmm. that don't hold weight. Yeah. Like you know, no, that don't, that's not what I'm living. That's like a rapper rapping about what he's not living. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. Exactly. Like I can't relate. To, yeah. I can't really relate to. Hoes ain't this, you know. I don't even call them hoes. I don't call. I don't even use hoes. I don't use bitches no more. But I can't relate to that no more. Yeah, you know what I mean? No, like, for sure. I'm a dad, a two, a two girls. Yeah. You feel me? So why am I talking about hoes ain't shit? Yeah, for sure. That's for dumb. Sure. You feel me? <laughs> like, no, for sure. No, that's a fact. You feel me? So you know, I can't reflect. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta. It's a line, and I gotta go on the other side. Like, Man, you know? it's so much dumb. It's so much dumb shit I see on social media. I be wanting to say something. Like, no, it ain't even worth it, dog. Yeah. Cause you see, like, what the fuck is these people talking about? Like the right. comments and the, the debates, and you can post something, nigga, want to debate you on your on what you think, what you feel. Right. Like, man, shut the fuck up, bro. Like, <laughs> I got, I, I had, I had to stay away. From that shit, dog. I would tell my wife because she she sees some shit. She don't like. She say something. I'm like, dog, it ain't even no point. Like, yeah, for sure. It's not even worth it, dog. Like you say, you got a brand, so you don't want niggas to look at you as a clown or something. I don't want to support him because of what he's doing and what he's saying right. on social media. You know what I'm saying? But niggas right. don't be thinking like that, dog. And then thinking about the clientele, like, all right, we got we got the the guys who are uh married. Mm-hmm. You know, or that are grown up mm-hmm. and don't engage in them type of activities, and we got the females that that they with. You feel me? That are upstanding, you know, citizens. Mm-hmm. And then we may have the hoes too. You yeah. feel me? Then on this side, we got the dudes that's talking about hoes and shit. They not buying nothing. You yeah. feel me? <laughs> but this husband, he wanted so he. You got something going on? Mm-hmm. Okay, I like what you talk about. You just like today. I was just talking about uh, be a policeman before you be a street nigga. You yeah. feel me? For sure. So. He's they see that they say, Oh, yeah, I'm gonna support what he got, mm-hmm. and he gonna get something for his girl, or she gonna support what I got because he done told her, you know, because yep. she looking at him like, Okay, he want to be around people. He talking about he been with this lady for 12 years, mm-hmm. go head up to that shop, they don't got nothing going on, for you sure. Feel me? Yeah. But if I'm talking about hoes ain't shit, she gonna be like, I don't really like you know, you should, <laughs> you know, guys, we listen to our woman first, yeah. you feel me? We're not gonna, you know, we're gonna listen to what they saying because yeah. they, you know. Secretly, they run what's really going yeah, on. The right woman, the right woman. Yeah, the yeah. right woman. Yeah, for they sure. They run what's going on. Yeah. Even some bad women be running what's going on. They can, <laughs> they can put you in a blender. No, but, for sure. and then and then it's and then it's the hoes. They might want to shop too. Yeah. So I got one versus three. What's that shot me on? No, for sure. You feel me? Hell yeah. Like no. I'm on. I'm gonna be on this side. Like, yeah. Hell cause, yeah. Cause dog really got a real job. Yep. You feel me? He not out here on this side. This dude scamming a little bit. He yeah. He spent a hundred, two hundred this day. You feel me? But the next day, his scam ain't working. Yep, the fake car. Up. Hell yeah. You feel me? You want to ride a car, it ain't work. He's shuffling through the car. <laughs> like, man, what's going on? Like, let me just clean the dog. He about to get to this check. You know, he about to get the, uh, the uh, <laughs> Stellantis check or the Chrysler check from the, you know, the kickback. And Hell he yeah. about to come shop. Like, no, for sure. Hell know? yeah. Now, you said something bright in between, you know, what you were talking about. You said uh, be a policeman before a street nigga. Oh, yeah, but yeah, most yeah. most niggas look at the, at the policeman as like, Shit, that's that's the cop. I like. I'm I'm not doing it. That's a that's a sellout. And and not looking at it as like we need more police officers that's that's from the community that's gonna go ahead and serve and go and do their thing and not just gonna be some white dude who don't fuck with Detroit, don't fuck with the black culture and trying to go in that business and, and raise havoc. Yeah, yeah, I think like like let's just say Detroit. Like when I be in Detroit, like it's just because I I be driving from Chicago to Detroit, Detroit to Chicago. Mm-hmm. Like Detroit is a safe zone. When I get to Detroit, I don't really like if whatever's going on. I know that I'm. Most likely ain't gonna get pulled over. Like the Detroit cops, they not they don't really fuck with you like that. Yeah, unless you just out here doing unless you just yeah. out here on some bullshit. Like other places where they behind you, they follow you till you when you get in the city till you get out the city. For sure. So yeah. like I can't really I don't really got nothing too bad to say. I just well, say that we do need more people from the city to be to be cops. And stuff. No, no, for real, for yeah. real. So I, I'm saying that if you become a cop, it ain't like you gonna be a scumbag. No, for sure. You feel no, me? Yeah. And then two. When you get a ticket 
or you need to pay something or you need to get your business straight because mm-hmm. right now people look you know before you get into the bag where you need to get your business straight and you in the streets like that time gonna come where you need to do you need these questions answered where do i pay for this ticket at where do i go to this at how do i deal with this situation mm-hmm. if you don't have nobody to talk to about that yeah. you know what i mean like no for sure these street niggas don't know i don't know i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna run Hell yeah, I, like, I yeah. got a warrant right now i'm gonna go myself <laughs> No, you feel me? Like you would need somebody to talk to. So sure. if you got somebody in the in on a, in the uh criminal justice system, you got somebody who can answer these legit questions. They're gonna say, go down to this building, you're gonna go to the 13th floor, you're gonna talk to so-and-so. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, what about like my homie? He he said that one day he was on a uh expressway in Southfield. He was on the Southfield Expressway. Mm-hmm. Somebody had some road rage, he pulled a gun out, or they pulled guns out at each other. The person shot at him he returned the shot and returned guess what that person was a cop he went to jail and he his he was facing like double life or something like that he was he real like if you met him you'll be like no way you went through this yeah. but he a real positive person for yeah. but he like i was i beat the case because you know this the situation was a bogus situation but he also had people in the system where they could talk to the judge yeah for sure we don't got nobody who could talk to the judge <laughs> exactly don't nobody all. know judge so and so no not at all not at all though. nobody know judge so and so like you don't got nobody who can even speak for you at because all because you don't have nobody in in the in the criminal justice system mm-hmm. this as much as you need to your know, people that's in the streets when something go bad you can call them you need somebody on the other side yeah too. for sure you that's a fact me? yeah we don't know nobody and people be talking about vezo his first manager was the, was a police yeah so it's like that don't take away from nobody's street credibility no for sure you know what i mean that's like the source that you need all, all of it is everything is tied together yeah. all is one if you really look at it all is one so I mean that's just is my advice. Then also they said that usually people in the criminal justice, I mean people who are police end up becoming uh defense attorneys because they end up making more money, but they learn the system from being a police, mm-hmm. so they know how to fight a case, you know, and get cases throughout and things like that. Yeah, they know how sure. to defend the criminal. So nine times out of ten, when you pay a defense attorney, he probably was a cop like 10 years ago, mm-hmm. and he was like they kept me at 60, 70,000, but I'm about to get 60, 70,000 for one case, and I'm about to get 20 cases this year. Hell yeah, for sure. Hell yeah. So Hell I, yeah. I had to make a change because I wanted <laughs> no, more money. For sure, for sure. Now, you said something earlier. I'm I'm, I'm listening to your, your story, and you talking about how you, you, you positive this, and then you tell the story about um you and your boy trying to, you know, yeah, say, yep, get the gun. Yep, yep, so tell yep. me, like, was you one of those dudes that was on fuck shit and just had to, like, realize, like, I'm doing a lot of bullshit, I need to change my ways? Um, and, if, and so, like, and what click to make you be like, I need to change, change how I'm acting? Um, okay, this is what happened. So, <laughs> all right, so, like I said, we're gonna lead off from the story. Um, we was trying to sell the, we was trying to sell the drawings. We got Jay Z. You feel me? We want ten for him. Yeah. You feel me? We want five for Memphis Bleak. We want uh, two for Chingy. You feel me? We might got we might got Nellyville in there. You feel me? with the Saint Lunatics? You buy the Lunatics with the Nelly together. That's twelve. You feel me? We want around the whole neighborhood. Wendy's. We at the uh, the gas station. We at the Coney. Yeah. Everything trying to sell these drugs. People like no, sweetie, no, sweetie, no. I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah. We go to the barber shop. You feel me? Cause we, that was like the last time we like. I'm like, we done. Then I'm like, hold on, let me stop in here real quick. Yeah. My barber, you feel me? Shout out to him too, cause he kind of led me into the right direction. He's sure. one of the reasons I'm here today. Yeah. He like, hey, look, I ain't gonna buy none of this, but you go across the street to Chaz. He run the Artist Village. Yeah. He gonna look out for you. For sure. That's all he said. I don't know who this person is or what, but somebody gave me a whole this little to jump through. Mm-hmm. Where I'm gonna be free because sure. all I'm seeing and all my family sell drugs. For mm-hmm. real. Yeah. You feel me? My everybody in the streets for real. Like mm-hmm. I don't know nobody but the teacher at school. Yeah, that ain't into nothing. Or the bar, yeah, or sure. the bar, but that's the only two people I know. Yeah, you feel me? So I'm like somebody really living and living as an artist. I don't, you know, I didn't even know you could do that. Yeah, yeah. I I go to the artist village. It's closed. I'm knocking on the door for an hour. <laughs> I'm 15. I'm trying to find a way out. For sure. I'm knocking on the door. If I don't got no way out, I'm about to rob somebody. Yeah. I'm 15. So uh then I go, no my answer. I go to the alley mm-hmm. and I'm screaming in the alley. Hey, Chance, I don't know who this man is. <laughs> yeah, for sure. He come out. 
Hey, who who was you? <laughs> I'm like, my name Fresh. Tez from the barbershop told me to come down here. He said, you got me. Yeah. So he say, <laughs> he go to the front door. He look at Chingy, Jay-Z, <laughs> Nelly. Mimbley. He said, how old is you? I said, I'm 15. He said, you 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 got skills like you 18, 22, something like that. Yeah. Like, he like, you cold. Come here tomorrow and you don't got to go home. Mm-hmm. So um, I came there. And then they showed me like they doing mosaic tile. They doing he doing murals. He going all over. They doing murals in the neighborhood and you know news coming. I met Robert Townsend two weeks in. You know from Parenthood and yeah, for sure. Meteor Man. You know he asked him to do his set for a uh, a comedy set, whatever like that. So I'm like, I immediately got lunged into the center of Black Arts mm-hmm. and on the West Side. That was the you know before Tashif and feel freshman and all of them you know it was only really chaz and tyree got in okay you know on the east side it okay. was and i met tyree there tyree was there too the first week he like like yeah if i see if tyree see me I'm like what's up like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know that's like my uncles you know what For i mean sure. Hell yeah. so i got lunged into this world where you know chaz pulling up doing murals mm-hmm. he may be there for eight hours he may be there for 10 10 hours but he about to make like he may make 800 he may make 2000 he may make 5000 yeah. you feel me the most i ever saw him make was 70000 in 2 weeks during the year you <laughs> feel me yeah. like he was giving me all tight ty- like i would just get paid to clean the brushes mm-hmm. load the paint and make sure that the van good yeah, you feel me? Sure. and then i got the black in colors he ain't give me no hard work he like i'm gonna do the rest black in this color i want this white green whatever yeah. so um that was the change, but I went to a um, portfolio review. I'm at Redford in class uh, on the ground. It's it's ma'am in the class. It's looking like class. <laughs> they, they doing everything but what they supposed to be doing. The teacher on her phone. She chilling. You no. feel me? <laughs> They they gang bang everything. It's it's on in there. I'm sitting down. You feel me? Just looking like this is my life right now. Like this real this life for sure. Fact. This what it is right now. You know. Yeah, I see a thing on the ground that say college portfolio review for the Art Institute of Chicago. Yeah. Come out on this day, it's October, you know, and bring your portfolio. Mm. I take it, take it back to the Artist Village, talk to uh, Ezel, which he just passed in the last year, but he was just uh, a graphic design teacher that was donating his time to teach kids graphics for mm-hmm. free yeah. at the time. You know, so he like, look, you want to do this? You the coldest, coldest kid I know. We gonna we gonna go up there with your portfolio. Yeah. We put all my we put my bad. We yeah. put, you know, I, I think I still had Jay Z, Nelly, and them. I had a few. <laughs> you feel me? I had a few other things. You feel me? Yeah. I had a few other drawings, cards, and stuff like that. We put them all in a, in a black trash bag. Yeah. I had on a five X black T. Uh, some uh, yeah, early two thousand. Some shit. some forty two rocket word uh <laughs> black pants <laughs> and some coat highs and a big old black. <laughs> Detroit uh hat that was bigger than my head, you feel me? <laughs> to the side, like I was T out in that thing. Yeah. You feel me? With my braids down there. You feel me? So Duh. we went up there and it was line. It was it was probably like 10 white kids with like two thousand. No, it was 10 black kids with like two thousand white kids. Yeah, you know, and we stood in them lines mm-hmm. and school after school, you know, it was different art schools all over the United States. They like you lit you yeah. feel me like we messing with you i went to the uh then i went to the art institute of chicago line mm-hmm. they like look we got a summer program mm-hmm. for kids if you come out here for the summer um we would teach you these different categories and one of them was fashion for sure and uh you know it cost to come out here i think it was like four thousand for mm-hmm. three weeks yeah and that's crazy that's two thousand and five you yeah. know so five five bands is like yeah, what, 15 like, 18 right yeah, now yeah, that's a lot of money you know yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a lot of money you feel me rent was still four, four five hell yeah damn i missed you know? that rent yeah so <laughs> rent was still four five hundred for you, you know? yeah, everything included yep so yeah everything included <laughs> yep so uh they had they sent me a message back you got a 20 so I don't know, they gave me a scholarship for like half off or something. Okay. But I had to tell my mom that 
I need to pay the other twenty five hundred. Yeah. I'm at Redford. Like, don't no good kids go to Redford. So you know, I'm, I'm, and I told y'all what I was, you know, in the hood doing. Yeah, I was on sure. bullshit. I was on everything. You feel me? I just could draw really good. That everybody knew me for drawing. So yeah. I take this paper to my mama. She like, she like, like, what I'm gonna pay for this for? You don't even be. You know what I mean? Like you barely be going to school. Like yeah. you, you ain't you ain't no shit. You feel me? My mama like you ain't no shit for real. Like I ain't gonna lie to you, son. I ain't about waste this money on your ass. Yeah. yeah, you feel me? You ain't no shit for real. So, <laughs> uh, so I think she ended up talking on the phone. My I got an uncle in Chicago. He an architect. He built his own house, everything. Yeah, and he did. But he was like a treacherous nigga in Detroit, but he went to Chicago, changed his life in the 70s. Hell yeah. You know, like like on some, it sounded like a movie though. Yeah. He was a treacherous nigga in Detroit on everything. You yeah. feel me? Like a tough ass nigga selling drugs mm -hmm. and went to Chicago and told these people he an educated black man yeah. and created a whole new life. Exactly. You feel me? Yeah. Like that's crazy. It sounded yeah. like a Tyler Perry movie. Yeah. Like, and by the time they found out, like he was on bullshit, it was too late. Yeah, like they was already it. had kids and everything. So <laughs> <laughs> she you know but now he he uh edu he's really educated he really went to these colleges and he really was teaching and doing everything you know yeah. he wasn't he wasn't that person no more for sure you for feel sure. me so she tell him about he like this motherfucker he want me to pay for this to go to this school she say he he tell her nah that's top three art schools in america yeah if they saying they want him and they gave him a scholarship, a scholarship. oh yeah you yeah. gotta jump on you it. need to jump you need to jump on it yeah man so she paid and that was surprising because she ain't never did nothing like that in my life for real. <laughs> you know like that was one of them things i'm like she paid this money she don't got to do nothing for me for the rest of my life mm -hmm. i don't need nothing else yeah you said like, i really ain't want her to pay it you feel me because you know you know how it is your mom that's your og yeah so who knows what you know what i mean yeah, like, yeah yeah what that money could be doing for you yeah. right you feel me could do it for the household like mm -hmm. you know so she paid it i went out there they was they like, no, you cold. Yeah, ain't it ain't, ain't like my class. It wasn't even no people from America in my class. Everybody was all over the world. It was like two people from America in my class. Oh, Everybody shit. else was from all Korea, Africa, yeah. uh, all over the place. Italian, uh, uh, Italian. One of my homies, he was Italian. He was in there, yeah. and they gave me the highest award that they gave any student. Damn. So you and that boy going crazy? I I was just at Redford, yeah, exactly. trying to with Jay Z and Nelly, <laughs> but you're selling them for the combos. If you get the Nelly and the Saint Lunatics, it's twelve. I'm looking up. You feel? Me? Like I got you. in the class at class. Yeah, I'm in the class at class. Everything. Duh. You feel me? Like, Duh. That's like funny, I'm in I'm in the hood. Yeah. I'm I'm in the hood for real. Like we about to rob the white folk. That's the plan. We yeah. about to get out the hood. And now you out here and with people from different me, countries. They telling me that I'm the best in this class, and they gave me the award. Yeah. You feel me? That's so how up. do I go back to Detroit, knowing that I got the skills? to be the best designer in yeah. the world if I wanted to. For sure. You know what I mean? I came back. I'm going to say, how was that coming back? Like, what, what was that transition like, dog? Like, you, how, how many weeks was you out there? Uh, Like, three weeks. Three weeks, yeah. So you out there, you meeting these new people and stuff like that, whatever. You, niggas from different countries, and you win this top award, now you back in the hood. Like, is, that, is that something to come back up on some, all right, bet, that's some positive shit, or that's, like, kind of depressing? Cause you're like, it was like... Like... I want to say it without. Mm, how can I say this? All right, I, my my people that's religious don't take this, don't take this personal. Yeah, yeah. Make you sure go you and you see God, yeah. and He tell you like, you can do. God tell you, you can you can do whatever you want. You yeah. just gotta put it in the work. Mm -hmm. And He put you back on earth, and you go around, and you tell you looking at people like, oh y'all on bullshit. Yeah, for sure. you feel me? <laughs> God just told me He made everything in the universe in the world. Yeah. He just told me I could do anything I wanted to, sure. and y'all sitting up here playing. You yeah. feel me? Like you start looking at people above you, like my parents on bullshit, my mm -hmm. teachers on bullshit, the school system on bullshit, everybody on bullshit, no. the whole thing on bullshit. We're not supposed to win. Mm -hmm. You feel me? It's no way we're supposed to win. Like because guess what, little Italian boy who wasn't the best, he about to go. They about to drop him into some place where he about to get two hundred, three hundred thousand. You know, yeah. designer screws. Hell yeah. You feel me? Or whatever he want to design. And that's his, that's if he not trying. Yeah. You feel me? If we try our hardest, like our hardest, hardest, you feel me? Like, 
man that's it's crazy it just, yeah. seemed, it just seemed like like i don't know so i came back now i think that changed my way of thinking so i my goal was like i need to get out of i need to get out of school and get out of detroit because yeah. like the whole sh- everything fucked up no for sure for everything sure. is fucked up and for you realize that share young age though like sometimes and it do take leaving bro because like for the longest i thought detroit was everything end all be all and once i had I remember going to Texas, bro, like, just to visit my brother. And I came back like, this shit, this shit ain't right. Like, right, yeah. I love the crib. I'm always going to love home, dog. East side till I die. Detroit, I love it. But when you go somewhere else, you really, you come back and see how fucked up everything is around you. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Sure. My, my brother staying in the Burbs and Plano in, in Texas and ain't nothing but nice shit. And you come back here like, dog, this, like, this shit is depressing. Coming back home when you land on that, you know, that plane, you land and you get back on 94 freeway and you come off on grass, you're like, oh shit, man. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like this some sure, bullshit, yeah. bro. It is, yeah, yeah, now yeah. you you got to the art early. Um, my wife had told me about you because I my son had drew, I remember he had drew something I didn't believe him, man. He was like about eight. Yeah. He drew a fucking Goku and shit. Yeah. And she sent me a picture. I'm like, I'm like, he was shot and drunk. I ain't know, but I was mad at him because then that's when she told him about you. And I was mad at him because he kind of like, but you gotta have a passion for it. He right, didn't really yeah. he didn't continue to do it. Yeah, but a lot of these kids who grew up now, they just look at like rapping and they looking at basketball and stuff like that. What made you like be so into the art and and, and drawing and stuff? Because you know it, it's not too many people that they can draw, but they don't look at it as like, oh, I can make a good living off of being an artist. Well, everybody, like I said, my family, they was in the street selling drugs. They was they was they all they do is fight, sell drugs, steal. Mm-hmm. Like I'm I'm being taught to steal at six. Yeah, you feel me? Like six years old, go on the stove, put this in your sleeve. Yep. You feel me? Like, so when I, you know, I found something that I like to do is draw. I was coming up with these different stories and these different characters, and all these different, you know, these this different where I could create the world. You know, I was, you know, it was like escape. Mm-hmm. So I always would draw. And then I, that's where I got my praise from. Like we was just some little nappy headed niggas. Yeah, you feel me? But when we when I drew this motorcycle, when it looked just like the Kawasaki on this page, mm-hmm. you feel me? Like, people would be like, oh, yeah, that's cold. You feel me? I'm going to give you a couple. You know, here go a dollar. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you want some ice cream? Like, keep doing it. It's hard. Yeah. So, and then, you know, I just was always the coders in the class. So, I used to wait till I couldn't wait. After I after I went to a new grade and undefeated them in drawing, I used to be like, I had to wait a whole another few months before I go to the next grade and defeat them. You feel me? So, like, that was my thing, like defeating people and, and drawing and being the coldest and drawing. So everywhere I went, they just said I was the coldest in art, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, yeah, that was my thing. So, I thought I thought I was cold. I read man, nigga who could really draw. Like damn, my <laughs> no, <teacher. laughs> but my my teacher Chaz, he told me after a while because I it was a student that was there. I think it was like sixteen. I've been there for a year. Mm-hmm. This lady paid him was paying him, you know, to teach him how to draw. Mm-hmm. You know, but me and a kid, but God we was close in age. Yeah. So I'm trying to defeat him and crush him. <laughs> and that's how my teacher getting his bag. You feel me? Like, so if 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 I'm <laughs> if I'm telling him like, no, nah, your shit through, like you would never be an artist for real. You feel yeah. me? And she stopped paying for the class, that's go, you know. Yeah. And he was like, You don't really, you know, it's a lot of people that's were artists that probably couldn't draw as, as good as me, mm-hmm. but they made it farther than me in the arts okay you know the only person that i think in the city i saw who could draw better than me was uh shifi when i first saw shifi mcfly uh, okay. or tashi when i first saw his his painting i was like damn like he was painting that like a <laughs> like a 35 year old <laughs> level yeah. at like 19 you know what i mean yeah and hosting uh hip-hop shows Sure. And you know what I mean, hustling and doing this and that. Yeah. Like I'm like, damn, I thought I was cold. You feel me? Like <laughs> yeah. so, so like, but other than that, like, you know, like you could still, if you're not great at drawing Nelly and Jay Z, you yeah. feel me? Like, <laughs> like it's not all about that. That's what I was cold. I was like, I can draw any anything as cold as this is, but you make do colors. It's so many different things you can do with art. Yeah. Like, no, for sure. No, so. it is. It is. At what point did you realize you could really like profit off this shit? Because like. Of course, you make your little drawings and stuff. But when did you ever did you know like it was that much money tied into being an artist though? Like c- coming up, uh, when I started seeing Chaz get these jobs and commissions and stuff like that, he'd be like, "Oh damn, they wanted me to paint these horses by this track in the 
boonies in Michigan or somewhere, you know, where yeah. people not at for real, like, and they're gonna pay me fourteen thousand. Yeah. And I'm like, in my head, like, he about to paint this shit in ten hours. <laughs> Hell yeah. You feel me? And, and then it's like different done. things. Like, I can't say it's a hustle, mm-hmm. you feel me? Because people look at the wrong way, mm-hmm. but you may set it up like, you know. I'm gonna need like two weeks to do this, mm-hmm. so I'm gonna need fourteen thousand. Yeah, you know you can get and that then, shit done, right? And then exactly. they pay you, and you get that shit done the same day. Like, <laughs> yeah. All right, y'all. Hell, hell, I'm yeah. up. You how, how do you make those connections though? Like to get those jobs, like those paints. Like you see a shit that be going up downtown. Like I could just imagine the nigga who did the little drawing and the pages for the, you know, it, it got the little basketball course out there, and that shit yeah. all designed up. Like, how did you get in touch with those people to be able to get those jobs? Um, it's a world. Like I say, like it's a whole world of. You know, um, kind of like if you're doing like all the factory workers know each other, mm-hmm. all the factory workers know these people, all the mechanics know these people, all the towing people know these people. So it's a world of that. You know what I mean? So when you into the world, I'm not as close into the Detroit arts as I was before. Mm-hmm. But if you know these people, you mean at these events and these functions and, you know, your work being showed off and they seeing your stuff here and there then, you know, you will eventually, somebody will eventually come up to you. Like, uh, a lot of, uh, uh, unfortunately, a lot of stuff that you're going to do going to kind of start off as free stuff. You know, yeah. like, you got a podcast. Say, like, you you may be like, man, I don't really got no budget like that for real, but I just need a backdrop type, mm-hmm. some painted, you know, on the wall. You feel me? And, I, you know, somebody like in my line of work, you know, if we're looking for that opportunity, we may say, Look, just buy the buy the supplies. Yeah, yeah and I, good, I, good. I and I get off on your on yours. You feel yeah. me? So when they seeing it, they may say, "That's cold. Who did yeah, it? Who did that shit? You yeah, feel me? for sure." And then now when they come my way, I may be like, you know, throw me two bands, throw me three. Yeah, bands. so you ate off something like, that you did for the love. Yeah, uh, the, uh, the homie just buying some shit. Nine, that shit then took off. Yeah, so like um, one of the, it was a store in Chicago that was carrying my clothes. Shout out to. Uh, King Dave um, in Chicago, he had a a, a clothing store called Culture Chicago, mm-hmm. and he was selling my stuff. And then one day we was just talking, you know, I'm like, who did this? You know, why they ain't finish the mural on your wall? Yeah. He like, I don't know, man, they be playing around. And I'm like, let me show you my work. And he like, you can finish it? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like it's going to take like three weeks. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, just, just throw me, you feel me? Just, just throw me like like six thousand just throw me like three bands you feel me yeah so and i'm like you know and then you know another little you know 600 cover supplies you feel me yeah and i got in there you feel me i just started going off you know i'm 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 going crazy on the mural i got like two two i got two jobs from that job Mm -hmm. one pay like two bands and the other pay like like four bands yeah you feel me? So, like, you, you feel me? Like, no, you just, sure. you know, and it's like, you just got to talk. You feel me? Like, one one thing that I use, don't let nobody leave without leaving your mark. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like, you know, so if, if, if I can't do this job at this price, mm-hmm. who knows? I may just ask you, like, can I leave my paint here? That don't mean you can have it. It just mean like, yeah. y'all need some art around y'all's facility. So sure. they, when these people come in here, they can see my work. Yeah, you know, yeah. and somebody going to ask about it you, and they're going to talk about it. You feel me? And if I end up getting some money off, you know, off, you know, a job or something from it, I might be like, you could keep it. You yeah, for me? sure. For sure. So. And then sometimes people, we want to charge for everything, but sometimes that connection going to get you some money. You know what I'm saying? For sure. In the yeah, long yeah. run, like you said, you did some shit for somebody they see in the back of the other podcast or the episode. Like, dog, fuck that shit. Like, who is that? Thanks, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So nice, some shit that you did, you and you and profit off of because everybody. I look at like a lot of these rappers too, bro, who be like charging for features and this, that, and third, but yeah. you ain't shit. You know what oh, I'm yeah, saying? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, bro, it, it, some, some things don't have to, it, some things can be free, bro. Like, people who have podcasts, for for instance, they be charging niggas to come on the show, but you ain't getting like five views. Right. Like, yeah, I ain't yeah, paid yeah, you like 200 to get on the show, and nigga, like, it ain't yeah, did nothing. You ain't did nothing. Yep. yep yeah, yeah, man. I can see that. Yeah. No, for sure. So, wait, uh, talk about like, you, you, you doing these jobs and stuff like that, dog. You, when did you when did you move to Chicago like full time? Man, as soon as I got out of as soon as I got out of high school, yeah, I was like, I'm I'm gone for real. Yeah, I'm now, now you you talk about Detroit coming back home and seeing like Detroit like shit. A lot of niggas say Detroit, Chicago, kind of like same shit. Uh, if you, 
I guess a few in the hood. Like, yeah. you know, I you know, I'm I'm really like Lash or Grand River, Brightmount area for real, mm-hmm. but in Detroit, but you know, if I only was restricted to downtown Detroit or this new downtown, not the old downtown. Yeah, the old downtown was kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah, that, shit, yeah. <laughs> that shit was scary. It was scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nigga walking down that bitch at night, boy. I working for uh for a field, nigga. That shit was yeah. dangerous. <laughs> Cap- I mean, before the Rosa Park Transit Center, Capitol yep. Park, when the buses pull up, you just seeing people talking about little square. <laughs> Hell yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For sure. Hell you yeah. Feel me? So, um, but if you in Ch- like Chicago, I got lunged into downtown Chicago where. You know, like one of the first things that I saw that captivated me was at night all they building lights on. Mm-hmm. Like I'm like, damn, like that's like fifteen hundred lights per building. Yeah. Like in Detroit, like them lights get cut off <laughs> <the buildings laughs> yeah. at night. Like, you know, they doing art shows with their building lights, doing various cancer awareness. Fourth of July, happy for you know, spilling it out with the lights. Mm-hmm. You know, turn this light on, turn this light on. Like I'm like, damn, some money down here. Like, well, no matter where where it's at, somebody can make some money mm-hmm. down there. Hell know? yeah. So it was just a, a change. And you know, like this is a new city. I can cho- choose where I want to live or where I don't want to live. I can create my own reality for real. No, for sure. So like I was really just like uh you know blessed to not have to deal with none of the hood stuff. But like later on it, you know it, you meet people yeah. You know, you may meet these people who they be talking about be some wild people in Chicago. Yeah. And they be cool as hell. Yeah. They be cool as hell. hell it's, yeah. it's just the environment. Like, like, you know, if you in the hood here, you're going to have the same type of issues that they got. But they like art, too. Yeah, for they sure. They want to see, you know, the cold drawings and shit. Like, mm-hmm. now, I mean, you you know, being a, uh, being a father, you know what I'm saying? Being a, 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 a you know what I'm saying, relationship with your or with your business, what's something that you still feel that you need to work on that might be holding you back in any of those, you know what I'm saying, situations or categories? Like, what's something that you still need to work on within yourself to, to go a little bit farther than where you're at now? Um, if it's anything. I think that giving myself breaks mm-hmm. and starting, because what, what will happen is I'm a true believer. Profit is about uh the five p's proper plan and prevent poor performance like i say like you know what i mean like we was trying to rob motherfuckers like that was our idea we didn't actually do it yeah but you know if a bank robber present a proper plan he can get off with money but if you like i say about the same thing with the police mm-hmm. if that same person become a loan officer you feel me you can get off with the same amount of money, mm-hmm. you know, because it's just a legal way of doing it. You yeah. know how many people get a loan and they never repay it and their business get back, go bankrupt. Yeah. You feel me? Like it's the same type of business. Proper planning prevents poor performance. Mm-hmm. So the bank robber just represents proper planning prevents poor performance. That's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. You know, and uh, but after that, then what happened? You feel me? Like you, like I say, I didn't have, I didn't really have a, I just in my mind said, I'm going to open this location and my goal is to hit six figures. Mm. After I hit six figures, I ain't really had no other plan. Like, what kind of sales do I have? Like, how do I, the clothes that we didn't sell, like, how do I, you know, get that off? And how do I, you know, uh, so I think taking a break and saying like, you know what? I don't got to sell nothing right now. Mm-hmm. I hit my goal. I'm about to relax until I create another proper plan. Yeah. You know? Yep. So not just keep pushing through, just push and push it. You know Yeah, I mean? like, yeah. No, for sure. Like, it's cool. Just relax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of, a lot of niggas don't know how to take break. A break. Like, you you need a break, man. When yeah. it, even when it comes to shit, man, I got kids, I got a wife. Like, sometimes you need a break from them. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You need that time to reset and be to yourself, bro. Now, I ask people this, man. If you had to introduce yourself to the world, Without saying anything, but play this song or this album that's gonna really explain who uh who fresh is. What album or song would that be? That's gonna tell me about you. Uh no, it's a little deep question, you know what I'm saying? That was that's a cold one. You that's, a deep cold, that's a cold question. Um, the album that says who I am. Yep. Um, what's the album that I listen to to define me. Yeah, like you all got through uh, albums or songs and you just really feel like, God damn, that shit, this me. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to think of somebody from the D. 
Yeah. That I listen to. Um. Uh, who can I say? <laughs> Man, I might start sending people this question early though. You I mean. put, you put, <laughs> you put, um, you put a a Jay Z verse and a Kanye verse on a Babyface Red <laughs> uh, album, yeah. and I say that defines me because <laughs> I can't say it's all that because I got like a different, yeah. I got, I got like a street side. You feel me? I got a more uh like positive way of thinking i mm-hmm. got a creative way of thinking i got a hustler way of thinking okay so you, so probably you, drop, you probably gotta drop comment on that thing too, or something <laughs> like that or like a uh most deaf on there too or something. now i'm, I'm gonna so. get to to profit the brand the brand but you said some junk that, that i don't agree with bro go ahead go ahead you said that the west side rocking out with this detroit music shit dog east side still on top of this shit bro all right <laughs> Go ahead, yo. Let's talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Tell now, me. Now, the, the, to me, the best Who the rap, top artist right now in Detroit? I mean, but if I go in my in my in my personal shit, go ahead. Personally, I think wasn't the best rapper in the city. Payroll. He from the West. I know. So what are we talking hold about? On, hold on, hold on. What? When we come to who who takes over right now? Dog. Babyface Ray. From he from here. Okay. Red Zone. Vezo. Okay. Peasy. Okay. Who we got from the West is really like like you know what I'm saying. That's fucking over them. Baby money from hitting red zone. I thought baby money from 12th Street. And he ain't from around here. I thought he from I thought he from East Side. Baby money from 12th. All right, all right. Well, I'll give you that then. But like who like we we running the East Side is running Detroit rap right now, bro. Like <laughs> and I solid baby. I don't want to put I don't want to put my foot in my mouth. <laughs> Cause I I really hang out on the east side more now. Yeah. You know, because Reason why? Because the West Side just so treacherous right now. Like, <laughs> all the crime that's coming is like every time you see crime in the D, it's something on the West Side. No, I'm crazy. glad you said that, Judge. We be having arguments all the time. It's, it's fucked up. The whole Detroit is fucked up. But for the most part, you all it's always it's always some West Side shit. And, yeah, and, when and we move, I had when my mom we moved from like Fullerton to Wyoming to like Brightmont area, and I was going to school out there. That's when I started fighting and getting into shit. Like, yeah. they, like <laughs> I fought a whole like a lot. Yeah. So. Uh, I say, all right. I say right now, we we can agree. Baby Money is a top rapper right now. Okay. All right. Can we agree? Skiller Baby is a top rapper. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. He West. He up there. He up there for sure. Can me, we, my, me, and my producer had a conversation about him though. That's so funny. Just had a conversation about him yesterday. Can we agree? V's is a top rapper. Can we? Get, can I get that one? He one of them. That's all right. Right now, they you, all knew. Let me tell you this right now. Whenever, if you say right now in the present day, when you say Detroit rap, first person you probably gonna think of is either Ray or Vezo. Right now, okay, I, I knew that. Like v- Vezo is the face of Detroit rap. First thing that people gonna say is Vezo. He's D- he is Detroit rap. Yeah, 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 for sure. But Vezo is. What twelve years in the game? No, yeah, fast. He been he been grinding for a minute. He been grinding for a minute. Easy, same, same. Baby about baby about uh face about eight maybe. Yeah, like he right behind them. GT for that brought that time. Yeah, GT. Shout out to GT. That's the homie. Yeah, yeah. Shout out, dog. Shout out to you, cause even though you didn't want to come on shook up, (laughs) but he playing, man. (laughs) Don't do that, man. (laughs) But no, but but, you know, yeah. I, so you saying like who on the come up who just kind of like I'm saying visas he knew yeah he and knew he, he got the city going crazy no he do he do he do Skiller got the like right now Skiller V's yeah. they kind of neck and neck right now yeah. they both they got two different sounds you feel me but we claim both of the sounds for sure and they got the city going crazy now the song gorgeous yeah. that's that's the that's like the anthem right now for real. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. T from the West she, she Side. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, so it's like, like we we are there. We, we are as I say, Detroit fucking shit right now. Then, but like this the, the only thing though, I can't really say that's a. All due respect, I can't really say that's all a positive thing because, the West Side is like when we when East Side when they start taking over and rap, mm-hmm. like they accept everybody. You mm-hmm. know what I mean. Yeah. Like, cause you gotta think, Skiller got put on from Sada. Yeah, for sure. He's got put on from Face. Yeah, you feel me? Um, and I think 
baby money, he been grinding. He's probably the only person that just straight grind, straight grind. house phone, y'all. Yeah, it's just straight, <laughs> straight grind, and you know, made it to his place without no major cosigns. For sure. But yeah. I'm pretty sure he had help too. But when the West Side get it. They don't put we don't put nobody on. Yeah, we yeah. just ball right, hog. You feel me? Like we really ball hog. Like, like well, you got what? T T Con. I mean, Solid making noise, but T Con put the, you know got behind him. Pause. Yeah, but <laughs> they, uh, Solid was already putting in. Yeah, his he put in work. work. He yeah, just kind of like put him on the plate. Yeah, got something I got had to think about a little harder. But like, I can honestly say, all right, so. I'm part. Yeah, I'm probably gonna get some little message from this, but fuck, <laughs> you know, we just gonna say it. T ain't put on nobody from uh All Star a ball hard. Oh yeah, 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 oh, yeah. yeah. He ain't put on like, like he. I know they they probably on you know some of them on good terms, some of them on bad terms, and we ain't gonna speak on that. That's their sure. business. Yeah, yeah. But you know, um, like I'm waiting. You feel yeah, me? Like no, I'm waiting. Sure. You know, yeah. like and and see and then we we I talked to the East Side West Side and I love East Side. Only reason I stay on West Side now because that's where my wife from. But like to me, what's ain't when I think about this, this sound now, I'm always gonna say what's name was the was the was the fathers of this shit. No boy cash out. Yeah, no boy cash out. I think they already they already was equally yoked. But when pay got into position, like what I'm not talking about nobody that you said you want to sign to your label and they never came out. Mm-hmm. Like who have you who have they put on? Who like they? who ha- who has a great, you know, like you gotta think Sada Baby put Skiller Baby on while he was still building his career. Yeah, no, for sure. Even yeah. Big Sean, like I did a lot of different things to Big Sean. Got respect. I was going to ask you, of, like, I, like, who are some rappers you work with as far as with the arts? Yeah, yeah. I uh, I did a lot of, I did some stuff with Big Sean earlier on. You know, with mm-hmm. them, Zeno and them, and Gumbo and Tone and Dub and all of them. You know, shout out to them. But you know, like, finally, Fame is supposed to be as big as the ASAP Mob. You mm-hmm. feel me? Like. You got ASAP Rocky. You got, yeah, Ferg, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got Ferg. And then all the other people got they, you know, career here and there. You mm-hmm. feel me? Like we never, we deserved, we deserved to have a, a big Sad Ain't Tone album. Mm-hmm. We overly deserved to have an early Mac album because early Mac, Sad Ain't Tone, Key Wayne, they, when they all together, yeah. like, I'm surprised nobody really got to see them all in the studio together. Like no, the stuff sure. that they just bounce off the head. They just so creative and they just so cold with it. Like they couldn't lose. Like the stuff that I seen earlier on, like a lot of them, you know, you got five, you got four to five people in they camp that deserve to have a national super, you know, great break. You know what I mean? I think, I think you know. I can say I think Dusty was a part of them too. But oh, yeah, Dusty yeah, put yeah, his cell phone. Yeah, you know what right, I mean? Yeah, like yeah. West Side, we don't put nobody on. Like yeah, yeah. we don't. You, you might it, it might be true though. I might have to look into that. I really I really think yeah. about it. Like like everybody who got in position never put nobody on. Yeah, but it, or if if somebody put it put somebody on, it's from the East Side. East Side to put the West Side on, but the West Side won't put the East Side on or the West Side. Yeah. So that's the only <laughs> thing that I don't like. You know, with the West Side having it right now in rap, like. Mm. Like that's it's great that we you know got a ball you know V's from you know like V even V would be rap ball you be like ain't nobody gonna help you if you get go broke so you better stay on top you feel me like yeah, that's sure. real you feel me but like you know uh or he, he I think he said in the live if you ain't never helped nobody why are you asking me for help you yeah. feel me like we West Side we some Bro. selfish ass. I yes. think I think we but might, we swagged out though, yeah. but we lit. You feel like me? You say, I think about I, I forgot what I was talking to this about, but, but like I think when you said helping niggas out being selfish and shit, I think about people who be on social media who be wanting like dog share my business, share my podcast, share my movie. Yeah. But nigga, when it's time for you to see your homeboys or people you know doing something, you ain't sharing shit, bro. For sure. You ain't go ahead. So if you want that love, you gotta be giving it out. And you ain't gotta be looking for it, but my thing is. If you got a platform, like my shit ain't the biggest, but I know whenever I see somebody doing something, I throw up on my story, I do that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's just how I love because I'm for like, sure. I just want to see people win. You know for what I'm sure, saying? For sure, yeah. So it ain't gonna hurt me to share your shit yeah, or yeah. me to shout you out, bro. Facts, facts, and vice facts. versa, but niggas don't facts. be understanding that shit, dog. Facts. And and the thing is, like when I, you know, with with uh G, mm-hmm. I see GT. I met GT at the studio with Big Shot and them. Like yeah. or, you know, early Mac, he kind of brought me in to help him design some products because he he was creating a plan when they got in the industry early Mac, the smartest one out of all of them. But when he got in the industry, he had 10 steps. We're going to do X, Y, Z to create 
uh generational wealth for everybody around us. You feel mm-hmm. me? But you know, GT was up there too. He was, you know, he was young, he was young, he was up there, you know, doing his thing. You mm-hmm. feel me? I remember like I I'm showing him Jay-Z Nelly. You feel me? <laughs> he like, you cold, fresh. Like, <laughs> you feel me? Like, that's back then. He was super small with all them tattoos on him. For sure. Hell know? yeah, hell and, yeah. And uh, you know, you gotta think like, but G really got on when he was like those really a lot of west side people he really got on with the east i mean he probably got a whole different story but like the east they got they came together you feel me mm-hmm. and they first got they self-established got their team established and they started establishing everybody around them you, know sure. what I mean? Hell yeah. you didn't see that with the west you know yeah. so it's like i would i really would have thought g and dusty would have did a tape you mm-hmm. know because they had all them freestyles back in the day yeah, that was so yeah. crazy Hell yeah. but like i really wouldn't forget about dusty boy yeah for sure i'll I be i hit up dusty i'll talk to him on Instagram. oh yeah another yeah. another rapper too uh my dog bodie bodie james uh, bodie james he oh, uh right. he did one of my fashion shows he uh rapped at one of my fashion shows yeah yeah, yeah and i see so. you got my, my homeboy he been uh doing something with you I um i see he gonna be a part of the stuff you got going on tomorrow which we're gonna touch up on but uh hp trice oh yeah trice that's, yeah, that's, yeah, the, yeah, that's, yeah, the, yeah, that's yeah, the bro yeah. he done so, so like kind of like looking at all, all that stuff like anybody who got something going on i just hit them up you feel me like earlier on i'll wait till they get a yeah, name already, yeah, that's yeah. that's lame like when somebody got a name <laughs> no, for sure. you know so now you want to show love like NBA. like trice i think he he was rapping earlier and i'm like hey come model for me you yeah. know so he still got my like pictures where he took pictures and stuff he said he was inspired to do his clothing line for me yeah for sure so yeah. yeah that's that's the homie like yeah. you got a few people you know um uh, we put we put a lot of different Detroit designers on, mm-hmm. like uh, and people on period. Like Isai Agro said, his first performance was at the original Profit on Last on Grand River. Yeah, you feel me? He just came yeah. there one day, and his man was like, "Hey, my home, my people got a song. Can they perform at your event?" Yeah, I'm like, I don't care. Like, yeah, for sure. You know yeah. what I mean? So now, that's now, cool. You just missed that building, and we can get to the the, the, the profit, the, the business, and stuff like that. Like. Yeah. I know you said you jumped into it 2014 without yeah. really knowing anything, just put money into it, bought the building. So, like, what what was your goal with it then when you just you just purchased the building and you had something to work with? Like, what was the goal back then? All right, so it's a story behind that too. Um, so um I'm at a I'm at a Atlanta conference, AC3. Mm-hmm. My brother ended up running into some people and he like, you know, uh this is if you knew music back then, like it's basically like you know you know how you know you ahead on artists and music you know yeah. so we like six months eight months ahead on travis scott you feel me he still got a haircut yeah. so we like oh, okay you feel me like so my brother like you know shit, travis scott he's a manager over there i'm like oh, okay shit, yeah. you know so we go over there and you know his manager working with two artists dougie f which dougie f just got an award for writing for drake this year okay you know but this 2012 this centuries back yeah, you feel me sure, hell yeah. and he like he worked with travis scott too so i'm t- i tell him like you know we live in the city you know what i mean like we know everybody we tapped in with everybody mm-hmm. so he like i'm gonna rock with y'all you know and we end up great uh creating a relationship brought his artist to, you know uh his other artist artist dougie f to detroit earlier on mm-hmm. and to do uh one of my fashion shows which is like known um and he had a, they had a good time and they felt welcome as well too yeah. and uh you know just seeing they crew move too that inspired me too but one day i'm like i'm in the hood and i saw like the the storefront that we had uh was for rent and it was like 350 at the time mm-hmm. so I, i'm on the phone with him like yeah they got a little storefront in my hood yeah. for 350 dollars. this travis scott manager he yeah. like he like bro just grab it yeah, for sure, yeah and i'm yeah. like shit i don't got it like that he like look uh whatever you need i'll send it to you just grab it. he said he i think a month later he sent me because we went through the whole process of doing a pre- business proposal and stuff like that yeah so he sent me like two bands just to lock the space okay you feel me and that's we then we created profit because before that I was just doing fashion shows for the homeless yeah you know like uh benefits for the homeless yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh he sent me the the money and we didn't even have a name for real we like i'm like if i do a lot of non-profit work but i want to make some money now yeah no i'm gonna call sense. it profit you because yeah. i want to make some money yeah so he's yeah so that's how we got started there 
Um, and we just, you know, they didn't have a, we really didn't have a plan. We were selling like, uh, resold clothes and the little you know that's what people will rock a little snapback mm-hmm. with an old school vintage red ring jersey or something like that yeah. that's what we were selling you know back excuse me back then then we printed some profit tees and they just went so fast mm-hmm. so and that, that and that was after how long are you being in the store that you started making the, the profit tees two years for real okay. so, you, just, so you built up a buzz and they can start to know you yeah we just kind of like just starting trying to do something for real because you know, I just saw that, you know, people like Rose Pitt had a store out. And I thought shout that out was, to Rose though. Yeah. Shout out to Rose Pitt. Like, like looking at him, like he would, like I say, what you see, you know, I don't know what he really do for real. You know, people, people don't, you know, you don't really know people from the internet. But what I saw, which I told him this, like I saw a positive black man mm-hmm. who showed his wife, showed his kids and showed that he lived a lit life. For sure. For rapping. Sure selling sneakers and traveling yeah i want to be like him no for sure so i wanted a store you know and yeah so you know and i told him that too he when we was on the phone one day uh because when i finally took over the old burn rubber which is the space we in now mm-hmm. uh you know and i told him that he started like laughing you feel me because he like yeah that's right you feel me like yeah no, you hey. know like who who knows but this is the image that i want to Marketing, yeah, promote, promote. yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Because uh, what what did that do? That inspired the young men to get a store and to you know create opportunities for other people. Mm-hmm. So you know if I, if he was in the streets, maybe I would want that. Yeah, way, no, you know? for sure. Yeah, yeah, no, he definitely one of those ones, and that's one of the conversations I had on the show that I really enjoyed with him. Man, I was I was happy he came in the hood. My, you know, what I'm saying coming to yeah, the basement so, and chop it yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. What I'm saying so. Shout out to him for sure, for sure. So I mean, I mean, um. Buildings do you have? Like, are, 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 oh, so so the last year Grand River space we end up closing that in 2017. Okay, and uh, I had took a break. We really, um, me and um, shout out to the ex profit uh members. You know, Mark was holding it down, JT was holding it down, Juice was holding it down. Just me and one of the members, we just wasn't really seeing eye to eye. We were supposed to open up a Chicago location, mm. um, and just. I think when we got close to doing a second location, um, we just, I don't know. It just, it just, the energy just was off. Like we wasn't the same people before when we started. Mm -hmm. So we didn't get a chance to open the second location and we just, you know, just kind of had a falling out and, you know, we just had so much tied into the original location that, it was no way to kind of like keep going with because it's like yeah we 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 doing it for our culture you know but we don't care to be in the same room with each other at the time yeah so we just like let's just close it and stuff like that for so sure. uh after a little while uh people was just asking like dang y'all close the space why i do that i was yeah. coming to buy a tea yeah. i was coming to do this <laughs> so I just wasn't, I wasn't in love with it no more, but my um, cousin who was, he kind of like, when I went off to college, he went to prison. Okay. Because he did rob somebody. You know? <laughs> he, he so, through, yeah. so, yeah. Like, he, they, they cooked him. He was in that boy for a while. So, <laughs> so now, you know, it's seven and a half or eight, and eight years later, and uh, he getting out, you know, and I'm like, you know, I'm, I done went through so much different stuff. Like we working with Travis Scott people and we at every concert, you know, and we traveling and we doing LA and we doing, we doing so many different things, working with everybody doing so much positive, positive, positive things. I'm like, I need to pick him up from prison. So he won't yeah. fall into back into the, shit. the bad bag. You feel mm-hmm. me? So when I picked him up, he had all these ideas coming out of prison, what he wanted to do. And, you know, he started talking about clothes and I'm like, you know, I got a clothing line and I started showing him different stuff. And he like, all right, I'm going to do all the other stuff, but the clothes we rocking with profit. That's what we're doing. Yeah. So still at the time I wasn't doing too much, but he's like, I need a profit outfit for this event. Mm-hmm. I want to do this. I'm going to do this only in profit. That's all I'm wearing. Yeah. So I start making clothes for him. And then people start requesting clothes. And in a few months, I had like hella orders where I'm ordering 200 t-shirts, 200 hats, mm-hmm. 200 shorts. And that was like decent numbers for real. You yeah. feel me? Like, and they, it's all selling out fast. Like 
I'm buying clothes that I think gonna last three months and just last a week and a half. Yeah, gone. You know, gone. <laughs> you know, I got motion, instant traction, you know, and we created the brand, you know, the brand revived for a second life, you know. So uh yeah, it started moving again. And mm-hmm. you know, we didn't have a store at the time, we just was kind of like out the trunk and stuff like that. And um, we started doing little pop-up shops with the malls. So Originally, we were supposed to open up our newer location as a start over in L.A. Because the Beverly Center, which people yeah, don't know, yeah, people, yeah. yeah, they they're owned by a family from Michigan. Okay. So when I'm looking up their lease office to see what they got for you know up and coming, usually malls have something for the upcoming entrepreneurs. So you know if they got something for upcoming entrepreneurs, you just call the leasing agent and ask them what opportunities they got coming up for up and coming people. Mm-hmm. And when I called, it was a two freight number, and they like, yeah, we know Blockbusters and the Artist Village and all that, you know. Yeah. We really kind of know about you for real. Yeah. So they like, we gonna throw you a store for the low if you come to the Beverly Center because we already know your story for real. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh yeah, we lit. <laughs> yeah, we go. Yeah. They take me to, I go fly out there, I see my store, everything. They like, you know, only thing is, you know, for the price we're giving you. If somebody rent your store, you got to move to a, another empty location. So you got to have a mobile store, but you good, yeah. you know, until it's not good. Yeah, <laughs> so, sure. so I got all my, you know, eggs ready to do that. And then COVID happened. Right. The month later. Yeah. You know, actually, I was on a plane and somebody <laughs> had a COVID mask on and I'm like, the fuck is that? Like, as <laughs> soon as I landed. Everybody had masks on. <laughs> as soon as I got back to the city, it was on the news. Like it was like a movie for real. No, for and real. then they like, you know, if you give us these large sum of money, we don't have no plan to give it back to you in case we can't open them all. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, all right, well, I guess we ain't gonna have no store in the Beverly Center. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, just imagine yeah. you give somebody a large sum of money and they're like, I can't give it back to you. Yeah, like, it's yeah, in there now. Yeah, it's, go, it's a wrap. It's gonna keep rolling over until mm-hmm. it don't. Yep. So uh Riding in the city, going to get some food. I saw um, a for rent sign on the store that we had now. And I'm like, it must be a sign because I got hit by a train right there. And I looked to the right and say for rent. And the um, landlord was like, I'm looking for um, a black, particularly a black uh, clothing, excuse me, business to be in the store. Mm -hmm. And she vibed with me. We got the story open it and we created more opportunities for more people. For sure. Hell yeah. That's what's up. What mistakes do you see people making now when they want to get to a fashion world, when they get into the clothing? What what mistakes do you see that people make on a on a you know what I'm saying on a daily basis? Um I wouldn't say it's too many mistakes mm-hmm. because I love seeing all the new clothes. Okay. You know, like I love seeing them. Like I think that um they just need to don't try to do what you the next person do. Mm-hmm. Do what you want to do. Yeah. So for instance, you may say, Man, I want to come out with uh Cabario shoes. And I, you know, I like the Italian shoes and they be the laces, you know, like a lot of people in Detroit really know a lot of details about <laughs> no, fine, sure. yeah, yeah. fine quality stuff. You no, feel they me? Do. And then when they're ready to do it, they'll put Carbario on a regular Gildan t-shirt. No, like you I, I wanted swear, to, you wanted to do a shoe. You feel me? So you gave up so quick that you just settled for a t-shirt on a Gildan. Yeah. But if you do some more research and you do some more, you know, if anybody not got any question about doing anything fashion, hit my line. I'm not going to hold no game or nothing like that. The most I'm going to do is charge you to design. Mm-hmm. But for info, I'm not going to charge. So you can go to sourcing in vegas where that event free and you go there they bring in all the manufacturers from all over the world twice a year from every country in the world Mm -hmm. at least 10 of them and they're gonna have the same people who make the balenciaga shoe the same people who make the gucci shoe and they're gonna have the actual shoes right there and if you like down to the sketchers Mm -hmm. you know they got if this the aisle for the sketcher of my bad, this the aisle for the sketcher quality, this the aisle for the Jordan quality, this the aisle for the Balenciaga quality. It's gonna be 200 people in each aisle. 
You could pick from any of them people. They going to bag you and drag you into their uh, booth to get your business. Mm -hmm. And you tell them, I want this shoe to look like this and had this and it had a wax strings and a leather tumbled and this, that with the suede and the stitches like this with the fat uh, thing. And they're going to say, give me X amount of dollars. They're going to create you a sample in 30 to, to 60 days. And then they're going to let you know, like, all right, this is how much it costs for a run, which you need a hundred shoes. And you're going to do it like that. Yeah. Don't just settle for, you know, like we got a lot of t-shirt brands and I love all of them, mm -hmm. but do what your mindset to do. People yeah. don't even pay respect to the Gotti's. You know the people who did the Gotti's. The Gotti's was a crazy shoe made by somebody from Detroit. Like yeah. that was the coldest shoe that came. Well, one of the coldest shoes that came out of Detroit. Yeah. Uh, right now, Chiefy Tribe got it with with their shoes. So. Mm -hmm. And it's funny you say because the, the Gildans, man. You know, don't do t-shirts, bro. Like because well, I, 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 I'm doing COVID. I wanted. I gotta get back on my my t-shirt line, man. I had the shit. The brand was called Young Excellence. And young excellence that had the young kings, young queens t shirts. Yeah. So, but I was like, I found the Gildan shirts. Right. You yeah. feel me? So, it was put, put them boys on. But it's like, once you get that first wash and they're dry, yeah. it's, it's a wrap. Yeah. So, talk about the people who start these these t shirt lines and how important it is to get like a high quality t shirt that you can go ahead and throw in the wash machine and still rock it and still be fresh. Uh, you know what? I ain't gonna lie. I, I can't. I, I, that's something I disagree on. Okay. If, um, if you got a brand mm -hmm. and you do a simple print on a simple t-shirt and it's selling and it's working because your demographic, you know, all right, Kev, all right, y'all mess with Kevin Samuels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's I don't think he talk bad on women. I okay. think he put them put a reality check. For so oh sure. uh, some women want because he talk about high value man, he don't talk about a good man, he's not talking about a man that you know can at least just keep a job and bring in 500 a week. He's talking about people who make from a quarter million up to a million or a quarter million, million up to above that. Okay. So he tell these women like you want somebody to take care of you that make all this money but you don't that's not what you have around you. You're not living that lifestyle. You're not that person. Mm -hmm. So he's not saying don't don't try to get them, but he's saying Lower your standards and talk to somebody who make fifty thousand or eighty thousand or a hundred thousand or twenty thousand. Yeah. That fry cook could be the best man for you. No, for sure. Hell because yeah. you you bigger, you know, that's when it get crazy because you fat as hell. <laughs> you feel me? And your hair ain't done and this and that. You feel me? Like settle for this. Like it's not wrong with this. You feel me? So with the t-shirts, if everybody around you, if nobody is making you know, if people just around you got regular jobs and they can't afford, they already can't afford Gucci at all. Yeah. Why make a t-shirt and sell it for a hundred dollars? Not for you sure. Me? Fast. Yeah, if no. you make a t-shirt and sell it for 30 or 40 dollars, that's affordable. Mm -hmm. And they selling off the racks and it, and it, it could be a gilding with the, with the tag cut off. If it's working for your brand, <laughs> yeah. do that. You okay, know? So it's okay for me to sell my gilding t-shirts. I'm good. No, it's good. It's good okay. to do that. All right, bad, But bad, if bad. you around people, you know, you know, like like your cousin G, he's not gonna wear it. He not he wears certain things. You know, he likes certain things. So he may want the brand that, but he, he these people ain't no dummy. You feel me? They mm -hmm. not stupid. Mm -hmm. They know that you may try to sell a guild to them for the hundred dollar t shirt. They looking at the quality. They mm -hmm. already got this and that, so they know that this a three dollar bill. You feel yeah. me? So. You can have a successful brand and at affordable prices mm -hmm. with common material if you you know got a clever or uh amazing design for sure you know um, yeah. do what works for you no you, you know? yeah, that's true you can't be sitting here getting this this cheap material and selling it for 60 70 dollars right yeah i got me i asked somebody to come down here man we it, the, the hats like you know what i'm saying it was a it, it, it brought a hat i'm thinking he about to give it to me for a little he like yeah 40. I'm like, bro, I'll give you 20 for that mug. Right, that mug yeah, dog. Yeah. Then, like, you you watch Looney Tunes, Yosemite Sam, we got that big ass brim. Yeah, it yeah. was just like, I'm like, bro, yeah. I, and I got a big head, nigga. That motherfucker, yeah. I couldn't even get that mug on my head, bro. Cause, like, if I put it all the way down, that bitch gonna be in my nose. Then, if I right, put it on top yeah. of my head, that motherfucker up here, like, right. And yeah. I, I think a lot of people get into this fashion stuff, but don't really pay attention to the material that they use it. They don't pay attention. Yet, and so. then they sell this stuff, and it, like you said, a nigga try to charge me 40 for a hat. And that motherfucker didn't even like it just felt terrible. Right. Shout out to my dog Stats, man, from HP. He be his shit, his his stuff be good. 
So, like, we really be looking at, like, you know, how can we get – either we're going we gonna to pay – a lot of people going to pay, the, you know, what we feel like it's worth mm. or less than it's worth. So, mm. it's like if you got a T-shirt and it looked like a 40 50 and you want 20 that's an easy sale. So, I'm going to be like, hey, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah right for now. sure. You know? Or if you got a 40 50 T-shirt and it's 40 50 okay. But that 40 50 T-shirt that you want for 120 because you you are used to wearing this stuff mm. and they don't you know somebody can probably make way more money than you selling a thirty dollar t-shirt a hundred of them than you selling two two or three oh hundred dollar t-shirts you mm. feel me so yeah uh and then it's more people out there wearing it so do what work for you for real um and shout out to profit brand you feel me we got a <laughs> uh, sale going on this weekend all of our classic uh profit cash only tees twenty dollars all weekend so make sure, sure. y'all shop hey make sure y'all go get a tea and shit man tell me uh, i sent you you get uh no money off <laughs> 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 now uh though i want to ask you this real quick too man before we get about here though as far as the uh, brand you have in the building you gotta have staff you got yeah. you gotta have you know saying people that work for you and stuff dog how tough can that be having the right people in your stores and have ever been like a bad story with an employee uh, that you can speak on we got a few we got a few stories <laughs> we got some some employees was like talking to each other and then when legal action got into play all of a sudden they weren't talking to each other yeah. you feel me like you know you was talking to that person you know you was talking to that person too yeah, exactly. now that this going on you feel me like or this this play involved you feel me now nah, y'all can't Y'all was, t- y'all was, yeah, y'all was just <laughs> yeah. cool, like, like that. So it's like, I really look now, I don't really like people, uh, being in, uh, be like work relationships if they work for me because mm-hmm. it get crazy. Like, I need you to go do this event for me and I'm paying you, but she playing it this way because she trying to get back at them. So they <laughs> late, you feel me? And they in the, you know, she want to sit in the car and he in there trying to sell and he kind of mad. You know, like <laughs> all these situations like come about. So I don't think that they sh- you should talk at all in situations like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people be trying to steal and that crazy. Like you don't know what's, what you got going on. Yeah. Uh, people be coming late. Um, people be just playing crazy games like you supposed to be selling clothes you in there with the drink you feel me? like getting turned you know like yeah. i'm like wow you know um <laughs> I, got a, I got a bunch of crazy stories but i'm not giving up i'm not giving up on my people i just no. think i uh, i need to um for the next go around when i start bringing in more people i need to be better prepared and we got uh good stories too like mm. You know, me and my my cousin Rich Rand. It was only really me, Rich Rand, and uh, my homegirl Lasell when we had end up hitting a hundred thousand dollars in sales. Yeah. So we didn't have a lot of those issues when it was kind of like less of us, mm-hmm. you know. And we covered a lot of traction, and we traveled, and we did a lot of great things, yeah. you know. So for every uh, every bad That's story, right, I got good ten one. good stories for sure. Have you had to, ever had to put hands on somebody on your employees? <laughs> Did I put hands on somebody? <laughs> I think I, I think we got close. Anytime yeah. I feel like we get to that level, they just need to just go for, sure. for real. Yeah, so yeah, I never yeah. actually put hands on nobody, but it, it came to some points where we got into some crazy texts yeah. or we got into uh, some some huge arguments. Sure. Okay. But luckily that never happened. I, I'm against all that. You yeah, know, somebody I said, can get hurt. Because I me. asked that story. I know nowadays, bro, with, with everything as far as like groceries, gas, like prices – for shit is, is, is extremely high cost of living is high as hell so i mean I'm, i was just wondering that you know saying is it, is it tough to have employees because you know shit niggas ain't trying to get jobs if they getting you know pay if they ain't get paid so much you know dollars an hour and shit like that so i, I know it might be tough you know what I'm saying keep staff because shit niggas don't really, really want to work now ever since like you mentioned COVID, once niggas start seeing some money when they were doing it if it was stimulus checks if it was unemployment it kind of like stopped niggas from wanting to really you know saying work for a certain dollar amount yeah um i be i go i i get a lot of different issues so you know i kind of i can mix the local with the designer you see i got you know got gucci hat on with some with some bellies you feel me with mm-hmm. my with some 
you know, new profit shit, you know, profit shorts and stuff like that. But like people just and then they see like a lot of my success part. So I may be, you know, I may be like, hell, I need my grass. Can anybody cut my grass? And they'd be like, yeah, I can do it for 200. <laughs> Like no, this is like serious. Like I always run into this issue. They say two hundred, you know, like a little light two hundred. You feel me? Like what? <laughs> like so, I run into a lot of them issues where I either gotta like do it myself, mm -hmm. or you know, uh, go through somebody else to do it. Where they like you know, uh, because people just feel like you, they gotta inflate the price for you. Like you really, you know, <laughs> living crazy like that. You know, yeah, and you know. It's my fault too. My lady always like tell me like you kind of put your you advertise that like you market yourself like that like you got the hugest bag in the world. So you know people expect you to pay the hugest bag too. So yeah. I gotta watch the things that I do too. You For know? sure, hell yeah. Um, so hell yeah. She all came. He said we was cousins. So you know you throw me a couple dollars. <laughs> For sure, for sure. I, 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 I wish I, I if I would have came to the wedding, I for sure would have put that pack in there. Oh, shit, man, style. Hey, that's one thing we we fuck we and we missed out on is is wedding gifts and money because shit, COVID. We had to cut that shit down to 12 people. Oh, we had yeah? bought the whole we had paid for the whole venue or everything, bro. Yeah, a week before COVID hit. Wow, lost that money. I'm still trying to get that money back, dog. Like, I ain't going down without a fight, dog. Like, yeah, for sure. You gotta <laughs> just do another reception or something. I don't know. No, hell yeah, we gotta do something, dog. Yeah. Hell yeah. Now, uh, if it was a brand that you could bring back and and and, and collab with, that I don't that I not necessarily is dead, but just people don't rock with it no more. I just don't. Like for example, like let's say um, Rockaware. What would be some shit that you would bring back and you would want to go ahead and work with and think that you can go ahead and take them over a level again? Uh, it's two. It's two brands. Um. Okay. Um. And shout out to uh Tony Shelman. He uh he created Mecca and he kind of like was like a soft mentor to me too. Mm -hmm. Um but one, two brands, I would say Azure. Okay, yeah, Azure right. had a lot of potential that that they never hit. It just was, you know, a brand that kind of hit every you know, it was everywhere, it was a brand to have, mm -hmm. but it never really I don't think they hit their peak like they should have. And uh Jabo, like I think oh, I could. Shit. I think Nigga, I'll be a brand best. I'll yeah, be I think, the face of Jabo. I think it, I think if Jabo, like if I were to come in and design a collection, yeah. I think that it could be a updated, up to scale collection. Oh, you know, I think four plus five or something like that. They kind of do that style, yeah. but it's not actually Jabo, but it's that same like style, and they popularized it. Yeah. But Jabo, I think I can. Damn, uh, Jabo, I think I can come in and kind of, you know, like. That's a designer peak. Like if you can create a silhouette that your brand have done mm -hmm. and it be copied or, you know, it gets so big that it, you know, like it could tank your brand too. You know, like, like somebody created bell bottoms, but mm -hmm. nobody wearing bell bottoms today. <laughs> yeah, for you sure. know what I mean? So like with the, with the shuttle pants, I think that was like one of the most creative designs that I ever seen. Mm. But it also it also had tanked that brand, you know. Yeah. Um, the Fubu jersey, you feel me? Like yeah. that was a popular design, but it also tanked the brand. The Kooji sweater that was a creative, you know, mm -hmm. where other people tried to recreate it, and it was so big, but it also tanked the brand. But yeah. I think that if Jabo brought me in as a designer, I can take that to the moon you know what i mean yeah, like, yeah. are you looking for are you looking to do something like that like like yeah i, I never actually had no designer job for uh for a higher like established more brand but i have the skills i know how to sew. i went to fashion school so i know how to sew i know how to design I know how to do tech packs mm -hmm. you know i just never uh done that but also maybe i haven't promoted that like i say people see what you market so yeah for sure see what i they probably see. never even market that yeah so. every every dog dog hell yeah dog jabos well shout out to uh, hot boys man shit cash money when they was rocking the yeah, boys they made me money. get one the yeah. jabos with the, uh, the uh big ass white tee and the rees yeah. the old uh, class reboss boy Back. man hell yeah Back. now before we get about here, we, we got to talk about the first annual profit uh day that's hey. going on tomorrow man oh, uh, yeah. in royal oak uh just talk about that what what inspired you you know saying do this and what you got going on throughout this day because it's gonna last from you say uh after we had our big our big year you know um 
And you know, I go front like other brands. They be talking like, "Oh, we was doing like sixty thousand a month." All right, for us, a hundred thousand was great for us to do in twelve months because we come from the bottom. So sure. that was great for us. And yeah. I wanted to do something to give back to our customers for two thousand twenty-two. But the idea was just so big we couldn't complete it on time. Mm -hmm. Um, so we just pushed it to uh twenty-three. Okay, but it's a day where if you purchase profit you are gonna have a t the time of your life come mm. wear your profit that you purchase mm. um you're gonna be treated really well you know um we got we got a bunch of different things that we are giving out um and that we have just access to our vip mm -hmm. customers which we know the people obviously if somebody spent a thousand five hundred things like that mm. then you know we i know you more on a personal level and you know you good um and you also can come and if you you know unfamiliar with profit you can come and you can meet us um and you can shop as well because we got some exclusive things coming out mm. um dropping as well um for the kids we're doing a kid coloring contest which we're going to be giving away a cash prize so the robber character the uh, illustrated robber character going to be kind of blew up poster size mm -hmm. and we're gonna have a bunch of crayons you could color it and uh whoever got the best one gonna get first i was just gonna do a hundred dollars to one but that kind of seemed kind of mean so i think <laughs> we'll break it down to like 50 and uh first second third 30 and 20 or something like that for first second third because okay. i don't want to be i want to exclude other people yeah. um yeah um and then after that we got the meet and greet we got um burn poe and big jermaine um they do uh comedy with uh skin bone out of chicago they got a popular channel okay and you know they just go off so they support them running a lot sure. they coming out here to meet all their fans and people from detroit so if y'all like to see that i man and all of them just uh pull up they can be taking pictures and stuff mm -hmm. um well uh, we got um some exclusive merch dropping tomorrow which I haven't even took pictures of, but they'll see it when they pull up. And we got a big sale on any of our inventory that have been sitting. So if you, you know, like, like you know, if you feel like our prices could have been too high, uh, tomorrow is the day to take advantage and get something for, you know, all the way down from, you know, 50% uh, off, uh, you know, and you can get stuff at probably as cheap as like $20. Okay. Oh, yeah. um, and then we got a business panel panel um hosted by shy uh she's a cannabis um curator in detroit and um we got the brand some of the most popular brands in detroit uh coming out so we got um alexander rose gonna be at the business panel um you know he got a brand his his stores in uh uh what is it St. Clair Shores, okay, which is really like just across the hood yeah. off eight mile. For yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know, it ain't like way out there like yeah. that. But uh, because that's what I think when I think of St. Clair, but it's really just across right there. Yeah, yeah. The hood. But uh um, and you know, he did some designing for Babyface Ray tour set. Then we got Yurak Obama coming. He from like the Brightmont area, mm -hmm. and uh he did a lot of work to help build up Revive, and he has uh he done styling for, uh, you know, Beyonce big rollout with the little crystals and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And he did stuff with Buster Rhymes. He did stuff uh, for a lot of different celebrities, a America Horror Story too. Okay. He did styling like that. So you got to think like, these are people who in the industry, but they from the hood. Yeah, you know what I mean? Sure. Like, so, you know, um, we got June Buck from Black Back uh, Plotter Clothing. He's, more i think he's like on his second year designing but i'm sharing my uh my platform to him as well mm -hmm. uh we got foreign fortune they like a longer running um brand from basically my generation i think we like the same age they're at fairlane so then we're talking about um you know how to maintain a storefront for so many years yeah. you know in the same space or in the mall uh we got monique she's coming from chicago so she's talking about um you know how to be um a female in a male dominated industry mm -hmm. and mental health then we also got uh granger he got the brand chiefy tribe 
he put out uh you know the sneakers that's real popular right now and he's gonna be talking about uh marketing um and also mental health as well oh, shit, you then, got a lot of people here. yeah Damn. for sure yeah, yeah it's gonna be lit it's gonna be lit it's like gonna be, and, yeah. and then uh we got the fashion show hosted by rich ran and fans fans's uh fashion show uh curator but she just uh djing on this one okay kind of playing the background djing um and we got high risk clothing which is a new brand they haven't even released yet they're gonna be in a fashion show so we introducing them on our platform uh pillow boys they're gonna be on a fashion show Hell as yeah. well and them. uh top side they're gonna be in a fashion show uh as well and then we're gonna be showing our uh lifestyle collection which is more so like you at the crib you got the profit pajamas on mm -hmm. things like that you know yeah. like you know like i don't think no brand did that but you know you got to live all the way around you know with this mm -hmm. lifestyle so Hell yeah, that's yeah, dope. Sure. Hell yeah that's uh, dope. and then we throw an after party after that so if you know just so happen nobody can make it to the whole event all day mm -hmm. and you just want to get turned at the after hours <laughs> come you know to the to the after party it's going to be the same situation so now is, is, is it is it do it cost to come to the event like it's free it's free it's free it's free so like free come out now. uh you're gonna leave with something at least a sticker for free yeah you know so you don't gotta pay and do nothing you could just come and enjoy the vibe yeah, walk around mango and shit. yeah and uh we're trying to make it an annual thing um like i said this year we brought burn poe and big jermaine which is uh some really funny comedians off the internet off instagram but next year we we got a big name coming from Louisiana. Okay. I ain't gonna say who it is. Yeah. But we're gonna be turned. Hell yeah, hell yeah. And they gonna have me on that motherfucker too. Cause yeah, for sure. know <laughs> I actually to be honest, I I really I wish you could have just been there just to do this podcast all day. And dope, why yeah. these people, you know, people come, just come, set them down yeah. for two seconds. See, that, that, you know. That's what we can, we can, we can do that shit for sure. That'd be dope. Yeah, next year, yeah, we yeah, gonna commit to yeah. that. So that'd be dope, you know. Um, so hell yeah. Now I, I, I might get to we we towards the end. The last question I want to ask before we get to our, my end shit is a uh, young nigga shit versus some shit I've been through. What's some things that you believe as a young fresh that you don't believe in now? Things that I don't believe as a young fresh. Like, yeah, uh, young fresh, 18, 19 year old fresh. You thought this, but now you look at that shit like, man, I was on some bullshit. I was I was thinking some bullshit. Uh you guys all right. Can I can I can I change the age? Yeah, it don't matter what age is some shit. Go back you... to I'd say 15. All right. Because 19, I was my mind was gone. I was already in school. I had three jobs. I was living up. I was I was moving, you yeah. know. But uh I say disrespecting your people around you, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because we're gonna, you know, we're gonna we're gonna end it all on a positive note, you know. Your mom, you feel me? Yeah. Like you making choices for the people around you. If you offer some bullshit, it's ultimately gonna affect your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister. Mm -hmm. You go to jail, they in jail. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? Like we all got people incarcerated. We can't see. Why we gotta go and do this and go get to the officer? The officer yeah, at the yeah. at the jail wanna fill on you yeah. and all types of crazy yeah, stuff, exactly. violate you and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, like, like. Just think about answer this question. You feel me? You wanna go to jail so you, so you can have a, a racist officer fill on your mama titties? You yeah, feel exactly. Me? Yeah. Like, no, nah, you don't want that to happen. You feel mm -hmm. me? Do you want to have people be keep sending you money where you can't survive on your own? No, nah, you don't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Then we just go out, we talk crazy about you know our females. We treat our female females so poorly. We treat our kids so poorly. We uh, you know, you know, do we we uh, we want uh we want to fly out this ex, ex you know just super Instagram person then when you meet this person they don't even have nothing going on for themselves <laughs> no, you feel me? like like that's crazy you feel me like when you can appreciate the person that you already got in your life mm -hmm. you feel me with a natural body there's no reason <laughs> god i swear to god ain't no ain't no guy ever picked no girl that had no long lashes yeah. we never made it we never made no choice like that she got <laughs> eyelashes that look like bat wings on her face she is so beautiful let's pick no stay yeah. natural you know 
Stay natural. Put some, wings you know, put some eyeliner on. You know, we never said. You know, we. I mean, we may like to look at the BBLs on the. You know, in our phone, but in reality, you feel me? Like it looked. Whack, like, <laughs> that's whack. No, like, for sure. Cause you look at those old rap videos back in the day. Everybody looked different. Look, All they was, they was real natural back yeah. back in the day. You for know, sure. Hell and yeah. you know they want the. It's it's crazy. They better cut themselves up and do so much whore today to their body. Uh, and you know, like you don't got to do that. I'm I'm a father of two girls. You don't got to do that. If they don't, if if this person don't like you, guess what? It's somebody, somebody else. else that no, will. for sure. That's way better than that person because that person saying a lot about. Who they are, you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, and you know, to keep it real with these young young people, you mm-hmm. know, like if the streets, if the if the streets was so amazing and so justifiable, when well, nobody snitch, yeah, for sure. We keep we keep talking <laughs> about we keep talking about snitches. Somebody that made a whole business exposing <laughs> snitches, making millions. Yeah, you feel me? Like think about that, like. Sri Lord Rook, Rook was just on a, a podcast talking about that the other day. He said, Nobody even live up to these street rules. Who mm-hmm. live up to these street yeah. rules? Hell yeah. The person that, you know, in reality, they get your big homie. He sit in that room. You you sitting in the other room. You talking about, I ain't telling no nothing. <laughs> he said his name is Jaquavius Brown. His mama house. Hell yeah. I got motion out here. He yeah. don't got no motion. Sure. I need to get back on the street. Yeah. If somebody come to me and they talk about I'm snitching, they can't beat me physically. Yeah. You gotta say I move too smart. So man, I'm telling on everybody. <laughs> I'm telling on the whole hood. Yeah. You feel me? Sure. Like and and it, why? When you could have just told this young man who about to get 20 years, 30 mm-hmm. years. I, my cousin just went to um sitting on on somebody else court date in another court they gave somebody who was like 20 or 30 90 years over for a situation that didn't even involve them they sister called to defend them in a situation that wasn't true and they was trying to be tough you know and they they then he said the judge the per the somebody in in the courtroom said your sister that you did just fold, not even in the court in your court date. She and, uh, not even, yeah, not your even court support date. you. Yeah, not you and this boy through you your cooked. whole life. Yeah, it's a wrap. You cook. You about to be doing push ups, tough as hell. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. They got knee mug in the camera, nigga, for your, for your Sh- jail pose. Sharpening spoons, hell plastic yeah. spoons. You feel no, me? No, for sure. People, you know, need, people need to understand, man. Like, this, this stay out their life, bro. Yeah, like back, like. Now I can say, even though my family was in the streets, they always used to be tell me they used to be like, "Go home. You can't come with us. We're not yeah. doing this with you. No. If you doing this, we beating your ass. You yeah, feel me? for sure. You need like that. so. I did have some positive, you know, people, but I shit. How you gonna tell me to go home, man? I'm saying you with <laughs> why the money this big. Yeah. I want to do the same thing too. So we just gotta change the narrative and be honest and real to our youth and. Be respectful and uh we gotta you know just change the narrative like we 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 live in this wild right now man on all ends Hell yeah, dog. so we gotta change that and uh pay it for it help the next person so for sure for sure now i got this one thing dog I, i'm gonna end it off before we get to the drunk moment hot moment dog you know you're the first person about to do this statement called uh what's worse Okay, <laughs> I asked you the question. You tell me what's worse, dog. It's some silly shit too. Some some shit silly, whatever. Being a tall nigga with short arms or being a short nigga with tall legs. <laughs> Cause you gotta think that nigga with the tall legs got that short ass. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> what's worse? <laughs> you can't do nothing with no short arms. You can't, you can't do nothing but clap. That's bold as shit. Niggas like a T Rex in that You water. gotta go like this to get your out your pockets. That's bold as shit. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like if you got long arms and short legs, you can at least gallop to get to your location fast. <laughs> you feel me? You got <laughs> 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 No, I'm playing there, bro. <laughs> they owe me. The legs ain't working. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. Nah. Swing for the tree. Uh-huh. But 
you got short hands, you feel me? Like, yeah, you're cooked. Yeah, like, it's a wrap, dog. I can't even get to you got the gun, your waist can't even get that. You good. You, you can't fold get to your good. You gotta fold, you gotta fold up. They didn't shot your damn ass. <laughs> you out of here. All right, dog. They got a long casket, your funeral extra and shit. <laughs> you got short legs, they can just fold your arms and <laughs> Oh shit! No. That's bold. You gotta, you gotta pay for the super size cast. You got long legs. No, hell no, no. All right, no, this what that. Uh, you want no, no car, nice crib, nice car, no crib. Which one works? No car, nice crib. Uh, or night, nice, yeah, no, no car, nice crib, but nice car, no crib. I go, no car, nice crib. Okay. You can hustle out your crib for real, but Hell yeah. you can't, you know, that's wild. Somebody break your car, you in their sleep. You, know? <laughs> yeah. you can't do nothing. They got the gun on you, everything. Yeah, yeah, that's right. bold. He was that bitch sleeping good, too. That's but... bold. Wake up. <laughs> Damn. Fuck. <laughs> hey, it happened to me at work, though. I was going to the car and go to sleep, though, and they were open my car door, dog. Oh, yeah. I was on um, break, nigga. I was that bitch. Like, he, what the fuck? He violated. He like, nigga, I, he like, oh, uh, that nigga was like, bro, car. I'm like, yeah, nigga. <laughs> For sure, it's wrong. Car. All right, Green. next one. Which one worse? A chick with bad feet or a chick with bad teeth? I go teeth. All right. That's All right. like fire. Like, you yeah. ain't had no bad breath, can't have no bad teeth, none of that. All right. This, which one you think worse? Down from getting shot or down from getting stabbed? Stabbed. That's hell excruciating. Yeah. Man, hell yeah. You got to take that shit. You. All right, man. You know what I'm saying? Of course, no disrespect to your, to your lady or whatever. It was question. Go ahead. She pretty cool. She'll let me answer. Which one worse? Kiss your girl who got bad breath or eating a box, eat some stink box. Uh stink what's box worse? Or... <laughs> yeah. Uh I never I never ever ate no steak box, but I'll probably think the stink box was is worse. <laughs> All right, now with kids, what's worse? Having no money on their birthday or having no money on Christmas. <laughs> I experienced both of them. <laughs> Which one you felt the worst? I nigga? looking for the white people outside Red for Theater. <laughs> <laughs> Let me holler at you real quick. Yeah. Uh, uh, Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Because birthday, you, can, you gonna make some shit up on birthdays. Birthday, birthday, on where your birthday is too. Yep. You can hit the weekend. You can hit the two weeks. And, yep. you know, if it's summertime, you can go take them somewhere, have some fun. Yeah, you can always take them somewhere and do something. Yeah, yeah, it's free splash Christmas, pads in the summertime. <laughs> Christmas, you knew Christmas all day. Wow, that's <laughs> hey, <yo>. bold business. <laughs> they not trying to hear it at all. All the kids around them got the gifts. Yep. They not trying to hear it. I don't care. I... My, my youngest son was hyped him up. He got that PS5 because Big Brother already had it. Oh, yeah. He had the he had the PS5, PlayStation 4 and Xbox. So he like, I want to move up like him. Nigga, five years old. Like, you got to buy your five-year-old son PlayStation 5? Yes, that's what he want. It's not easy, though. Like, oh, uh, is you a father, too? No? Is it, so you that nigga looks at you like, something wrong with you, nigga? Nah, no, he does, <laughs> for real. Like, you got to think, being a father is not easy. No. Nah, you feel me? No, nah, bro. The rent is five days after Christmas. Duh, for sure. <laughs> you feel me? Hell yeah. And in my situation, my daughter's birthday is December 15th. My oldest son's birthday December 13th. Yeah, that's uh my, my daughter's birthday December 15th. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So yeah, she'd be three December 15th, though. Yeah, she'd be five, uh six on December 15th. Hell yeah. But it's like, all right, this took this took why did they send that big dictionary Toys R Us book to us when we was little? Duh, hell With yeah. Them, they had go-karts in there that was 1200, 1400. <laughs> Duh. They had super nerf. You circle this shit. No, you ain't your mama. You ain't did nothing. <laughs> hell yeah. That Duh. was bold. Like in the we give it to our parents, they already stressed out. <laughs> Oh yeah, not knowing that you about to fuck up that day even worse. That messed up their mental health for real. That messed yeah. up ours too. Yeah, trying yeah. to figure out why we can't get that. Like we gotta live realistically. Like okay, Duh. look, you can have this, you can have this two thousand dollar Christmas, but guess what? Your game ain't gonna work on the first because they cut off that electricity. <laughs> Hell yeah, for sure. <laughs> you gonna go to school? Yo, you gonna have on them nice clothes, but your booty gonna stink because they cut off that water. Hell yeah, you feel me? You. Will, you got to go to grandma house to wash up. You ain't going to make it there every day. You gonna go <laughs> yeah. to school. So you better make sure you wash up for two days. Or <laughs> you can have a $500 Christmas and we had everything else that we no, need. For sure. And on them other holidays, we're going to go crazy. Hell yeah. All right, this is the last. What's worse? Losing your chick to your homeboy or losing your chick to your ex? <laughs> oh. And the ex hates you. 
time. Not only you ain't lost your chick, but you lost your ex, and that's a girl, nigga. Like, I say a homeboy for real. That's worse. Yeah, yeah. I say homeboy, ex. If uh, I ain't really, it's some. I say some exes that hate me, but I think that they hate me because they can't be with me. You yeah. feel me? So. I don't. I wouldn't really feel like that's the worst in the world. Okay. But a uh, homie. Yeah, that's I gotta, true. Violated. I ain't gonna lie. I gotta kill you. <laughs> ain't no way around that. <laughs> All right, dog. Hey, well, she, we we don't condone killing y'all. Say no. That's bold. I'm, no, that's I go. She, she done got with a female. My ex female. I go over to their house. I'm trying to sit down on the couch, get comfortable. Yo, what, what was what was on the news today? I'm getting comfortable. With everything. I'm, but homeboy, what? Yeah, that's my lady. That's my lady. That's my lady, dog. All right, now we end everything off with a drunk moment or hot moment, dog. Funny story, when you were drunk, hot, or on cocaine? <laughs> we don't condone cocaine. Uh, if you hustling, selling it, go crazy. Yeah, 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 for sure. Using it, just stop. You yeah, know, that's go. crazy. Yeah, that but shit. Uh, <laughs> I say, I told you, I told y'all my drunk and my hot before because I was trying to figure out if it's a good story. But all right, so I, uh, I'm in Chicago. I'm young as hell. I got there when I'm 19. So my first two years, I'm working in a, a high end restaurant. Okay. High end restaurant with all the top chefs. They they 27, 30 up, you know. Um, and they drink. You know, Chicago's a drinking city. Mm-hmm. You know, so they would leave and go to the bar. But I'm the I'm lit at work. So they like, damn, you ain't 21 yet. Mm-hmm. You ain't 21 yet. Finally turned 21. They take me to the bar. I'm drinking. You know, I already drunk already for real. I've been drinking something like nine for yeah. real. But <laughs> this Detroit for real. Duh. My mama, my mama had the same situation like it is in here. We getting lit. You feel <laughs> me? While she out, I mean, we getting lit too. But yeah. or in high school, you know, we was always getting lit. But in this, in this, you know, predicament, I just needed to go in the bar. Mm. So now I'm in the bar, and we getting drunk, and. Music, it's lit. I'm feeling the moment. You feel me? I'm, <laughs> you know what I mean? Lit. You feel me? So I'm like, I just started break dancing. No, I think I seen another. This is downtown Chicago, so it's, it's a white bar. So somebody doing some weak break dancing. <laughs> you feel like, me? They used to, you know, they used to call me Little Trev. You feel me? I, you know, I start doing my ticking routine, the same one from the Murphy Middle School. Uh, <laughs> Uh, dance we used to have, you feel me? I started break dancing, doing all types of so. Uh, they just like hanging out with me after that because they like anytime he get drunk, he gonna do. No, so was you was you your head nigga, that motherfucker like spinning like? No, I want, I want, I want. <laughs> I want to spin it. I damn near. I'm getting everything. I'm doing all the dances. You feel me? They, Hell no. I'm just in my head thinking I'm at like it's like 2001. They talking about go a little trip. I'm drunk as fuck. So you really get hyped, nigga, pumping it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, that's funny as hell, nigga. I always I was jealous of niggas who could jet too. Yeah. Like my my legs didn't work, nigga. I couldn't jet for shit, dog. Either you got it or you done. That yeah, shit, bro. I, I had like a little a little intro, like that little that one two, and that was it, dog. Yeah, like, that's all you need. You be like, man, I, I ain't gonna fuck y'all niggas up. I ain't gonna fuck y'all niggas up today. Hey, dog, real quick, cause I'm a, you know, I know we got in this and we going for time a little bit, probably. I don't want to hold you too long. Uh, you said something that's real as hell, bro. All right. This the one movie that I can't watch today, cause my mom she passed or whatever. My dad shit. So when I watch the movie, give me my emotional bed. I go take a shower. For sure. But you yeah. said, nigga, Crooklyn is a trauma film because how the fuck you send your child away just for them to come back home and they mama done. Nah, <laughs> That's that, wild. Shit, that shit was bald. <laughs> I don't I can't watch I can't watch that film. My mama ain't died, but it's like like y'all went too far. Right? <laughs> yeah, she, like, she was living a good life out there with motherfucking in the south and shit, dog. Yeah, she ain't living a good life. It's funny the dog done died in the couch yeah, every day. You feel me? Like then they come back, everybody got a crazy face. You like, hold on, what's going on? <laughs> it's something I don't know. You know, you think y'all about to get evicted. <laughs> she like, no, nah, mama about to die in a few days. Ain't nothing we can do. I'm fucking everybody up in the room. Cause why y'all send me away? Why how can how can I replace these last days with my mama? Bro? Exactly. Like exactly. I'm gonna grow like she, like I say, she was that little girl was strong because I'm growing up and I'm not fucking with y'all. And I'm doing, I'm on all bullshit. Y'all gonna hate me. I'm gonna torture y'all. Yeah, she came me? home, niggas. Now she gotta be mama and shit. Nah, she gotta be the mama. And she gotta, you know, she gotta help her pops out. She ain't nothing but like 10, 12 years old. Hell like, yeah. And she gotta like replace 
you know, the person that kept everybody together. Exactly. You know that's what that's I mean? some trauma for real, though. That's like, some real trauma. If you knew man. mom was going to die, you should have sent for me a little earlier than the last couple of days, though. Right. She coughing. Did she? No, I think they sent her out there on purpose because they had to deal with the situation, like. The like, ransom shit, right? It was like, like my, my OG, she used to be doing a little shit like that. Like, it's, it's the summertime. And she feel like it's gonna be a lot going on, so she sent me to the east side with my grandfather. Mm. You feel me? But she took it a little too far. Like you ain't answering the phone, man. <laughs> I know you lit, man, because you already lit through the regular school year. <laughs> you feel me? Like you lit as fuck. I ain't speaking to you for weeks. Like that shit wild. Like, I'm thinking like I'm about to live here forever. Like you feel me? So, <laughs> So it ain't, you know, but parents, they be doing little stuff like that. Like, damn, I got a lot of kids and I can't deal with this this summer. You feel yeah, me? So I'm going to no, sure. send two to my my sister house in the South or I'm going to send two to Chicago. I'm going to send two here. You know what I mean? So that you can maintain it all, you know. No, and sure. they, I think they knew, like, damn, this situation getting crazy and she ain't going to be able to take it like that. Let's send her to the South. Yeah. And only to bring her back and your mama about to die. Mm -hmm. I'm fucking shit. I'm flipping table. <laughs> no, that shit funny as hell, bro. It was a pleasure for sure. Dog. For sure, I feel like I feel like I got intertwined. We knew each other for already for ten years. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Now, people know where they can follow you and shit, man. All that good stuff on social media and shit. Profit underscore Midwest. Uh, fresh to death on Facebook. Um, really, I'm the main profit. So if y'all look it up, y'all will find me. Yeah, um, and just stay positive. That's all. For sure, man. For sure. That's how you want you want any people always encouraging words, does. Um make it to the top, the bottom is too crowded. Hell yeah. Hell, that motherfucker crowd as hell. Yeah, for hell sure. yeah. Can't be yeah. in that bitch, dog. Hell yeah. Well shit, man. Hey, I appreciate you coming on the show, dog. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate hold on. Let me go ahead, motherfucker. Uh Got my tea and shit, man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And for you whole ass niggas that come on the show, man, be having motherfucking merch and shit. For sure. And don't bring me none. We want to talk about it, man. Go ahead. So the, when I when I had got them shirts, I ordered a thousand shirts. We literally got like twelve left. So it ain't you know, yeah. it ain't nothing. You know, it's cool. Yeah, for sure, for you sure. Did. Shit, man, you already know what it is, man. Episode one sixty eight. One sixty eight. Got motherfucking profit in the building, fresh. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We in here, man. Best podcast in the city. Ain't no competition. If it is, I don't really see it. You already know what it is, man. Peace. What up, man? It's your boy Shot. Shot vs. A-Bite Podcast.